All right, guys, welcome back. I hope I hope you have had a beautiful and relaxing break. And for the new students, welcome to this class. Lorena, thank you very much for joining us. Sudarat, thank you. Sudarat, Pungwadi, Alonso is joining us. Isabel, hi teacher. In the class as well. Hello everyone. Cameras on, everyone, please. We are about to start. Energy up. We are ready for the class. All right, beautiful, beautiful. Enjoy your coffee. You have enough coffee. But yes, be ready for this particular class. Very important class in the program, this one, by the way. So have your cameras on. Remember, that it's critical for us to have a good experience. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Santi Vela, and I am your teacher, your marketing and communications teacher for Lonsdale <laughs> Institute. Fantastic school, really good quality. The program is fantastic. The teachers are good. Students are good. You are in a good place. You are in a good place. You will learn. You will see. Them. So let's enjoy this process because learning is a really nice feeling. Learning something new is a really nice feeling. So today, this class, we will be learning about how to make presentations how to deliver presentations, how to assess how good your presentation skills are, right? So, so let's take that in consideration, right? It is about making presentations. Hmm? All right, beautiful, beautiful. We have a lot of people today, which is good. I really enjoy that. Anna, welcome to the class. Thank you for being here. Guys, cameras on. Hey, everyone. How are you? Hello, everyone. Hello, Eri. Hello. Beautiful, beautiful. Hello, Eri. Nice to see you again. Um, yeah, nice to see you again. Good, good morning. To class, Isabel. <laughs> How was your break? Hello. Good morning. All right. All right. Well, Okay, guys, um, just remember that if you're talking to someone else, please have your um, microphone off. This class is being recorded. Guys, this class is being recorded. You want to be you want to be seen in the class. You want to be seen in the class because the class is being recorded. This goes to the school and it's important for attendance. It's not just about having your name there. It's about attending to the class. So make sure that you have your camera on. That is important in this class. I know, I know that some teachers don't mind. I know. I do mind. I, I do care that you have the cameras on because it's not nice not to have the cameras on. Imagine myself giving you the class like this. For It's not going to be nice. So it is important to see our feelings, our expressions. Here we are. This unit, make presentations. It is about public speaking, yes. It is about public speaking, yes. Why? Because we need to be able to speak to different people, to different audiences all the time. Remember, we are doing marketing. We are learning marketing, but not just marketing. We are learning marketing and what else? What is that, Mariana? Communication. And communications. So it's yeah. not just marketing. It's not just about you knowing all the theory and stuff. No, it is also about you having the skills to communicate, communicate what? Your ideas, your projects, your concepts, your positions, your opinions, all that is important in this class. All that, if, if you don't know how to express your ideas, if you don't know how to express your opinions, you are in trouble. You could be the smartest person in the planet. You could be the most intelligent, you know, prepared, experience whatever yeah. in the planet. But if you don't know how to communicate your ideas, opinions, projects, you are behind everybody else. So that is the purpose of today's class. We want to learn today how to communicate, how to present our ideas. All right, first of all, first of all, I need you guys to have your cameras on. Otherwise, seriously, I will need to remove you from the class. And that is just because this is a class. 
All right. If you want to see the recorded class, no problem. You will see the recorded class. But for the class, you need to have your cameras on. Secondly, you need to go to accelerate the software that we use, and you need to check that you have access to this unit. All right. So in the next five minutes, we are going to do the technical boarding part of the class, which is you going to accelerate and telling me, Santi, yes, I have access to the class. Or telling me, Santi, no, I don't have access. All right, whatever is the case. So please go to Accelerate, guys. Everybody in Accelerate, go and open the software and find this unit, which is called Make Presentations. The code is 411. All right. Why? Because we need to access the content in Accelerate for us to deliver the class. And you need to have access to this, the system for you to um, submit your assessments. All right. So I need, I need you to tell me if you don't have access so I can fix it now. Otherwise, I will assume that you have access to the software. All right. All right. So I don't I don't hear anything from you. So I, I I suppose that you guys have all access to the software. All right, which is good. So Isabel, you don't have access. All right, let me. Sorry, I'm just I'm just checking if I have access. I need to check because I I have to like make this all thing up thing. Okay, so can you give me two minutes Goa. to check? Goa. Everyone, two five minutes. Okay. Go to I'll accelerate check. and let me know. So Isabel. Let me check your situation, Isabel. Teacher, what is the name of the unit? Sorry. Make presentations. Yes. Remember that you need to go to the learning plan. Yes. All right, Isa, I will check. Actions. Isabel, you there? Isabel, you have access to the to the program, to the class. Isabel? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm here. Just like maybe like I text in the in the chat. Maybe could you like the password? I will re like save it. Like return. So yeah, I lose with my old phone. Yeah, yeah I'll try five minutes. This is this is your profile, okay. Isabel, and this is the class. Okay. Make presentation. Okay. So you have okay, access. Good. You have access. Uh, let's check somebody else. All right. Just make sure that you have that you, that you don't have access by but so I can I can do that. All right. So it's Ajana. It's Ajana, where are you? I need to see you. Hi, sorry, please. I cannot see you, it's Ajana. What are you? Okay, I'm um... cool. All right. Do you mind to have your camera on? I think it's, it's not on. Oh, sorry. It's yeah, it was. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. All right. You don't have access to Accelerate? It's like I put my, I used to sign in with my code, my Longzell code, but now it's asking for my email and I'm doing different, but I think it's done. All right, let me check. Yeah. Let me check yeah. what is going I did. on. I did it. You do. Yes, you have access. I can see that you have access. Yeah. All good. So you all good? You have access? Yeah, just to learning plan. And it's a making presentation, right? Correct. That's it. Yeah. You all good. good. All right. Uh, all right. So seems like everything is fine. All right, guys. So let's go to the lesson. In that learning plan, you need to go to the lesson. I will show you what you need to do, all right? I'm going to share my screen. All right, let me let me know you can see this screen that says it's Ayana. Can you see this screen that says it's Ayana, everyone? 
Yes or no? Yeah, yeah. I yes, yes. Yeah. All right, all right. So I'm going to log in as it's yeah. Ayana for you to see what you see as a student. This is what you see as a student, the green, orange screen, all right? What you need to do is you need to click where it says learning plan. Learning plan, you click the learning plan, all right? And once in the learning plan, it will show you all the units that you need to complete in your program. The learning plan will be different depending on when you started this program, all right? But for it, Sayana, this is the unit number one. Here you go, make presentations. It, Sayana needs to click here in the lesson because that's where we start the program. We do the lesson first, and then we do the online quiz and everything else. So if you click here, it's Sayana, it will open. It will open the lesson, all right? And then we start talking about this unit, all right? It's Sayana, and everyone, I hope that you got it. Yeah? All right, all right. So let's start with this. Let's start with this unit, guys. Let's have a look at this video, first of all. all right, let's have a look at this video. My name is Monica. Thank you for learning how to make presentations with Lonsdale Institute. This unit covers the skills and knowledge required to prepare, deliver, and review presentations for target audiences. You're expected to make presentations for a range of purposes, such as marketing, training, and promotions. The aim at this early stage is to organize your presentation in a logical sequence and in clear, concise language. While it is important to suit the needs of your audience, you must also prepare the material in a way that suits your own particular needs as a speaker. In this class, you will first learn how to prepare your presentation. Then your mentor will help you to gain enough confidence. So you deliver engaging presentations using latest technologies and visual aids. And finally, you will receive direct mentoring on how to review your presentations and speak. So that is important, how to prepare the presentation, how to deliver the presentation, and how to review the presentation. That is the content of the class. How to prepare the presentation. First, we need to prepare, we need to plan. Hmm? We need to know what is the audience, what is the best method. Then we need to deliver that presentation. Of course, we need to deliver it. And finally, we need to review it. We hope this class gives you the communication skills so you can confidently make presentations and communicate concepts, business proposals, and ideas. Thanks for watching. I will see you in class. All right, beautiful, beautiful. So that's what we need to do today. We need to prepare presentations, deliver presentations and review the presentations. All right, I hope that is clear for everyone, all right? All right, so then you go and you press the next the next button. That's what we need to do, all right? You, you, you press the next button. That's how we learn, all right? I'm going to show you guys a little bit about this guy, which is called, is called Ken Robinson, Ken Robinson. Ken Robinson, for me, is the best. It, it, it passed away anyway, but for me, he was the best speaker, presenter. He's just so good, all right? So let's have a little, a little, you know, let's observe for a little bit Ken Robinson doing a presentation. Can you see the screen, guys? Please confirm yes, that you can see yes. the screen. Yes. What is the name of the video? That's called Creel Creativity. Correct. Well done. Pay attention, everyone. Everyone, pay attention. Good morning. How are you? It's been great, hasn't it? It's been, I've been blown away by the whole thing. In fact, I'm leaving. Uh, um, there have been three themes, haven't there, running through the conference, uh, which are re relevant to what I want to talk about. One is the extraordinary evidence of human creativity in all of the presentations that we've had and, and in all the people here. Uh, just the, you know, the variety of it and the range of it. 
Uh, the second is that it's put us in a place where we have no idea what's going to happen uh, in terms of the future. No idea how this may play out. Uh, I have an interest in education. Uh, actually, what I find is everybody has an interest in education. You. I find this very interesting. If you did it at a dinner party and you say you work in education, actually, you're not often at dinner parties, frankly. <laughs> it's a... <laughs> If you work in education, you're not asked, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and you're never asked back, curiously. That's uh, <laughs> strange to me. Uh, but if you are, and you say to somebody, uh, no, they say, what do you do? And you say, you work in education, you can see the blood run from their face. They think, oh my God, you know, why me? <laughs> my one night out all week. Um, <laughs> but if you ask people about their education, they pin you to the wall. But it's one of those things that goes deep with people, am I right? Like religion and money uh, and other things. So um, I have a big interest in education, and I think we all do. Uh, we have a huge vested interest in it, partly because it's education that's meant to take us into this future that we can't grasp. If you think of it, children starting school this year will be retiring in 2065. Nobody has a clue despite all the expertise that's been on parade for the past four days, what the world will look like in five years' time. And yet we're meant to be educating them for it. So the unpredictability, I think, is extraordinary. And the third part of this is that we've all agreed, nonetheless, on the really um, extraordinary capacities that children have, their capacities for innovation. I mean, Serena last night was a marvel, wasn't she? Just seeing what she could do. And she's exceptional, but I think she's not... Um, so to speak, exceptional in the whole of, of childhood. What you have there is a person of extraordinary dedication who found a talent. And my contention is all kids have tremendous talents and we squander them pretty ruthlessly. Um, so I want to talk about education and I want to talk about creativity. My contention is that creativity now is as important in education as literacy. And we should treat it with the same status. Thank you. Hey guys, what are the two topics our speaker is talking about? Who got that? What are the two topics he's speaking about or he wants to speak about? Creativity. What is that? Creativity. No. Oh, sorry. Creativity. Creativity is one. Education. Yes and education is too. So that is extremely important. This guy, I, I am telling you, he passed away, right? But he was the best. He was the best at, commun at communicating ideas and concepts. And that's why I have selected this video, because I want you to learn from the best. All right? So he's telling us, He's introducing the topic in a very, very interesting way, but he's telling us, look, today I will be talking about education and creativity. Mm -hmm. And that is what we need to do when we present. We need to prepare what are the two or three topics that we will be discussing in, in, in our presentation. Please don't forget about this. You need to select two or three key ideas that you need to develop as you advance in the presentation. If you don't select those ideas, you are forgetting something important, which is to plan, to plan for your presentation. Hmm? So before you present, remember you will need to present today, but before you present, you need to define two or three ideas that you will be developing as you advance. For this particular case, education and Creativity. Let's continue. Santi, sorry for interrupting. No problem. I'm sorry. I just texted that I'm not able to log in still in my Accelerate account. I cannot find, well, I was not able to go to the orientation because that was like the day that I arrived here in Melbourne. Yep. So, well, I went to the reception and well, everything was like not, um, 
they were not clear with me with, with the information at the reception out, out here in Melbourne. So um, I don't know how to log in. Like I've been trying and, I, and I've been Let looking me out with, okay, no, thank you. Let me with see, the link. no problem. Let yeah. me see, I, I will open it straight away. That's okay. The first class is always like this. We need to fix issues. So oh, that's yeah. Enough. Mariana, no worries. Thank you. Will, thank you so much. I, I yeah. will find out what is going on. So Mariana, okay. Pinet, no worries. Ladies. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, this is because I have not registered my email, but I was trying to like register my email and I was not able to do that, like to continue and then try to log in. But yeah, so. Let me see. The... Let me see what, what the system is telling me. All right, so you here. Yeah, of course. Take your time. Thank you for your help. The system is telling me yeah, that you're here and the system is telling me that you are enrolled. Right. Mm -hmm. see uh, what else I need to do. All right, so I have, I, I let, just let's confirm if this is your email, first of all. I will share mm -hmm. my screen with you, Mariana. Yeah, of course. All right, is this your email? Yep, that's my email. Mm -hmm. All right, no worries. So I'm going to send a new link for you to join the system. Okay, good. I, I, am I, sending, I am sending it now. Just let me see. Look, all right. So the link was sent to Mariana, this email, all right? Right. All right. Okay. So let's let let's wait for that. one minute and open that email. Oh, yeah. I have received it. So. Beautiful. So here, what you create my account. Oh, good. Now I think I can I can do the process and I'll let you know when I'm finished, okay? It will take you five, two to five minutes to do that. Do it. If you have a problem, let me know. Stop me again, no problem, all right? Meanwhile, okay. I, will, I, will, I will continue. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. I'll do that. Pleasure. Thank Pleasure. you. All right, guys. So let's continue with this video. All right, Ken Robinson, by the way, by the way, seriously, if you want to follow the videos from Ken Robinson, please do. Such an inspiration, this guy. He, he really, he really improved the education systems around the world. You know that education, the education systems are so behind everything else. Education systems should be the, 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 the axle for everything else to spin, but that is not the case. Everything is going ahead and education is so behind. So Ken Robinson, he worked with governments in, in here in USA, in Australia, in, 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 in London, in the UK, to tell politicians how to improve, how to improve education systems. So he left a very, very important legacy, all right? Let me just go back to where we were, one minute. Thank you very much, Darren. Oh, 15 minutes left. <laughs> so let's go back a little bit. Rashid wants to say. Um, so I want to talk about education and I want to talk about creativity. My contention is that creativity now is as important in education as literacy. And we should treat it with the same status. Thank you. All right, here we have the high note of the presentation, the, 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 the concept that is, that is challenging the status quo, all right? The concept that is challenging the status quo. First of all, first of all, who knows what is the status quo? When we talk about the status quo, what is that? Something about like your comfort zone of something. Something about what, Vale? Comfort zone, your comfort zone. Similar, we, we, yeah, more or less. This, this, the status, anybody else, before I explain the concept, anyone else has heard the, the, the expression, the status quo? Hmm? It's kind of the way that things are making, are being making now, like for like education, the way that education- That's it. Like That's uh, it. received today. Yeah. 
The, no, this, this, this particular class, this particular school is challenging the status quo. So what is a status quo? A status quo is the way we do things. It's the traditional way we do things. It's what we have been doing for the last 20 years. It's what we have been doing for the last 100 years. And that's why we say, oh, it's good, because that is how we do things. One of the most dangerous expressions and concepts in business nowadays. Oh, we do this like this because this is how we have always done it. Very, very dangerous. What is the status quo? Is that, is the tradition, is what we were told, is, is the average, is, is, is what everybody does because everybody thinks that is the way to do it. All right. And that is we being silly because we don't find different ways to achieve the same result. And we exist as humans to find more innovative, more efficient ways to do things. That is what allows us to survive in this planet. If we don't find new ways to do things, we extinguish, we die as, as a species. So we need to find new ways to, 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 to fuel, to power our, our vehicles. We need to find new ways to travel. We need to find new ways to cook. We need, of course, we need to find new ways to cook. Imagine, we, imagine ourselves still cooking with wood. Imagine, imagine the, the, how it will be, the contamination, how it will be the deforestation if we still continue cooking with wood, with firewood. So we need to find new ways, gas, electricity, and, and so on. The same for everything else. It should be the same for education, but with education, somehow we stopped it in the 1940s. Somehow, somehow, I don't know, we stop it. In forest with education, and and that is not good. That is not good because we should learn about finances. We should learn about finances. We should learn about cryptocurrencies. We should learn about digital properties. We should learn about cooking. We should learn about farming. We should learn about uh, dancing, about using our bodies in order to 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 communicate feelings. We don't do that. When was the last time that you went to a dance class? We should learn about coding. We should learn about the storytelling, about telling stories to people. When was the last time that you went to a storytelling class? So the reason, the reason you say, no, no, is because we were told that education is literacy, physics, chemistry, mathematics, biology, and geography and history. And all of that is very important. Don't take me wrong. But we also were told that creativity is not good. That creativity is for musicians. That creativity is for artists, for writers. That creativity is something somewhere in the sky that is not tangible, wrong. Creativity is even more important than intelligence. We need school systems that value creativity, not the methods. Hmm? But if you go to the school, they will tell you, oh, you know, if you want to write about something, you need to write 500 words minimum. Why? Have you seen, guys, have you seen those assessments, those tests that ask you to do 500, 1,000 words for you to demonstrate? that you know about the topic? Have you seen those assessments? Yeah, they are horrible. Yeah, you know, yeah. It, it's kind of frustrating when people doesn't have like this creativity skills and when schools doesn't let you like explore your creative side, you're going to be frustrated. That's why it's so important, you know, like creativity is the key to make great ideas. That's what I think. It's, 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 it's about surviving, I mean, we need to be creative and that is what makes us human. We are the only species that can imagine things in the brain and then, and then create them, you know, then develop them in reality, tangible. It's the only species that can do that. Fantastic, yeah. So we need to give more value to creativity. We need to find ourselves finding new solutions to old problems. And we need to be, you know, supported by teachers and supported by institutions to pursue that dream. I will never tell you, you need to write 500 words because you may write five words 
and be extremely brilliant with those five words. And you will tell me, Santi, this is a micro story. I don't want to write 500 words. Or you may say, Santi, I don't want to write. I want to dance. I want to paint. I want to develop a prototype. That's what creativity is. It's not about ourselves being trapped in a framework from which we cannot escape, which is what the education system did. You know, the education system wanted everybody to be the same. So everybody goes to the factory and everybody's an employee and everybody gets, gets a salary. No, creativity will set us free because we could be employees, but we also could be entrepreneurs, but we also could be artists, but we also, you know, that's what this video is about. So when Ken Robinson is telling you at that very moment, that we need to give the same value to creativity as we always give to literacy, that is the breaking point of that presentation. And you need to be able to, to observe good speakers like this guy. So next time that you do a presentation, you do something similar. So this guy gave us the introduction. I will be talking about creativity. I will be talking about... Um, uh, education. And then he started at the maximum climax saying something that people were not expected, were not expecting. Hey guys, listen up. I believe that creativity is equally or more important than literacy. Big, big call if you're talking to scholars. All right. So let's continue watching this presentation so we can build on it. And look how he uses humor. And he said, this, this was it. That is brilliant. That is, that is genius, guys. You know, that's, that's genius. For, for the smart person who understands the concepts, that could be the end of the presentation. Why not? Let's, let's have a look at that. Thank you. And my contention is all kids have tremendous talents, and we squander them pretty ruthlessly. Um, so I want to talk about education, education. and I want to talk about creativity. creativity. The contention is that creativity now is as important in education as literacy, and we should treat it with the same status. Thank you. That, that was it. Thank you very much. So, so, so why that is genius? Why that is genius? because he is reacting to the audience, guys, you know? I just want you guys to understand that presentations should be dynamic, should be two ways. A class like this one should be two ways. I need to look at you and you need to look at me and, and you need to stop me and you need to participate just like Mariana did for the class to be interesting. But imagine if you have a teacher that is just talking, 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 talking. Talking to that will be boring, that will not be engaging. So, what he did, he said something smart. He did, he did say something smart, and people reacted to that very clever way to express his idea with clapping. What he did, he thought, I'm going to take advantage of this to create a more harmonious, a more engaging environment. And he said, All right, that was it. You know, like, this is it, I, I live it now. And the audience was felt, was feeling, was, was you know, was, they, they were in love with the speaker because they were having a good time as well. A good time as well. So, you know, giving a presentation is not just about educating others, it's also about entertaining others, you see? If, if I don't entertain you here, You will not learn, I think. So that is genius what he did. Stopping the presentation saying that was it after he received the clapping from the audience and he acknowledging, acknowledging that reaction from the audience. Somebody else will continue, but not Ken Robinson. That's why he's one of the best. By the way, I don't know if you know about these kind of speeches, Ted, all right? But you should, you should know about Ted. And this is one of the most popular speeches, TED speeches in the internet. 
because precisely it's such a good speech. All right, so let's continue. Everybody pay attention, please. Three minutes left. <laughs> Well, I was born. No, the um, I had a great story recently. Uh, I love telling it of a little girl who was uh, in a drawing lesson. She was six, and she was at the back drawing. And the, the... all right, good. So now, tell me what resource is he using? I'm going to repeat it, and then you will tell me what resource he is using. Well, I was born. No, the um. I had a great story recently. Uh, I love telling it of a little girl who was. Uh, All right. Guys, tell me what resource is he using now? He has presented the topic. He has engaged with the audience. He has gave us what is the ultimate climax of the presentation, the challenging of the status quo, which is creativity is equally important or more important than literacy. What resource is he using now? Something about the storytelling, maybe. The story what is that, Valeria? Something about uh, storytelling, maybe, just for That's being like That's closer it. with That's the it. audience. Well done, well done, Vale. That's it, storytelling, and I want you guys to to love storytelling. If if you don't like storytelling, find something else to do, please. Find a different course. Find a different teacher. Find a different school. This is not for you. You need to love storytelling. You need to be able to tell stories because people do not react to data. People don't. People do not like numbers. People don't like facts. People don't like complicated and complex graphics. People don't like to read long, boring presentations. People don't want to follow long, boring PowerPoints. Seriously. That's not what I want you to learn. Presentations, PowerPoints, writing 500 words, graphics and data and numbers for you to be seen as a smart academic person. No way. Less is more here. Storytelling is less. Storytelling is about synthesis. Guys, who knows what is the meaning of the word synthesis? Mm, making a summary, maybe? That's it. It's a summary. It's, it's condensed. Anybody has, has, has enjoyed condensed milk? Anyone here? Is 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 the is the is the is the condensed version of it? Uh, or an, anybody has experience uh, something like um, essential oils? Anyone? That is a storytelling. The essential oil is the story. Why? Because the essential oil is the result of hundreds of kilograms of leaves or whatever is condensed to to get synthesize it to a little small bottle that have all the properties in a little, little container. That's what I want you to do. I need you to be good at storytelling. Hmm? So this is the resource that he's using now. He is using a short story to explain what he wants us to understand. And guys, if we don't use those resources, forget about presenting. Nobody will follow you, nobody will like you, nobody will do what you want them to do. You will not be persuading anyone, you will not convincing anyone, you will not be educating anyone, you will not be entertaining anyone. I'm going to repeat it. You will not convincing anyone. You will not be persuading anyone. You will not be entertaining anyone. You will not be educating anyone. Yes, Mariana, please go ahead. Thank you. I just wanted to say something like, you know, um, I think that one of the most important things about storytelling is that people uh, can feel related to what you're talking about. So they feel like, oh, yes, this happened to me. So they are going to be like more attached to what you're saying because they are going to say like, oh, yes, this happened to me. Oh, yes, I know how this works. Oh, so that's like the importance when you tell a story, the people can feel like related to it. 
So that's going to, yeah, create a great bond between like the audience and the, <laughs> that's the people. It. That... It will, that's it. It will create a bond. That's it. And we need to bond. We need to bond. Like, 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 like this is a sticky. These classes are sticky. You know, we should create this bond. I, I, I am opening myself. You need to open yourselves as well. So we create this bond, this dynamic for us to learn. Storytelling will allow us to do that because we humans, when we tell stories, we humans, but when we don't tell stories, we are mathematicians, we are physics, we are engineers, we are architects, we are politicians. You know, we, 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 are, we are the profession and we are more than that, we're humans. We need to celebrate that through stories. That's what makes us humans. So let's use that resource, but don't forget about those stories need to be very, very short. Like, like if you want to take your storytelling to the next level, I want you guys to start learning more and more about micro, micro storytelling, all right? Well done, all right, well done. Thank you, Mariana, and agree with that. If we don't use that resource, we will not be bonding as we could. But just coming back a little bit to what I was saying, guys, when we present, we want to have outcomes. We, we want something as a result of, of our presentation. And what are those outcomes? Listen up, entertaining people. It could be one outcome. Seriously, and nothing wrong with it. Have you seen stand-up comedies? What is the output? Entertaining people. Some comedians, they are very smart, so they entertain people and they also educate people. Right? But that will be the other outcome. You know, when you have a lecture, when you have a teacher, what is the outcome? To educate people. Hmm? What could be the other outcome? To persuade people. What politicians do? They persuade you so you vote for them. Hmm? Or what could be the other outcome to convince you, to convince you so you buy, so you join my club, so you follow me, so you sign up, so you give me your money, so you pay my product, so you don't do that, you don't jump, you don't fight up that cigarette. You don't have that last drink. That is convincing you. So what are the outcomes of a presentation, guys? Don't forget about it. Entertaining people. Educating people. Persuading people. Convincing people. That's it. That's it. All right? So let's just keep that in mind. What, what, what Ken Robinson is doing now is giving us a lot of arguments for us to believe, for us to trust what he is saying. Don't forget about the outcomes because we are going to be discussing those in the assessment and later in this session too. Drawing lesson, she was six and she was at the back drawing and the, the teacher said, this little girl hardly ever... I had a great story recently, uh, I love telling it, of a little girl who was... Uh, in a drawing lesson, she was six and she was at the back drawing and the, the teacher said, this little girl hardly ever paid attention. And in this drawing lesson, she did. And uh, the teacher was fascinated. She went over to her and she said, what are you drawing? And the girl said, I'm drawing a picture of God. And the teacher said, but nobody knows what God looks like. And the girl said, they will in a minute. <laughs> All right, I'm going to repeat that micro story so you get it. Highly connected with education, but more connected with creativity. The creativity for the girl to respond to the teacher's question. That is what kids have. And that is what we lose as we grow up, all right? We need to come back to that childhood when, when we were very creative because that will give us the edge in business, all right? Let's, do, let's repeat that. I had a great story recently, uh, I love telling it, of a little girl who was uh, in a drawing lesson. She was six and she was at the back drawing and the, the teacher said, this little girl hardly ever paid attention. And in this drawing lesson, she did. And uh, the teacher was fascinated. She went over to her and she said, what are you drawing? 
And the girl said, I'm drawing a picture of God. And the teacher said, but nobody knows what God looks like. And the girl said, they will in a minute. <laughs> All right. That is demonstrating what he said before about creativity being equally important as literacy. That is demonstrating once again his argument about the education systems being built for a different era. The girl gave us a really good lesson about how we can find solutions, new solutions to all day problems. That question has been asked a thousand times. What is God? What does God look like? She found a way to express her opinion about that in a drawing. That was extraordinary. Of course, it doesn't surprise me. It shouldn't surprise you because kids are like that. But guys, as we grow up, we forget about those things. We forget about breaking the rules. We forget about being innovative. We forget about taking risk and we become adults, all right? That's what we need to fix when we do business, when we learn marketing, when we learn communications, we need to forget about being always safe. We need to forget about not taking risk because if that's what you want to be, then you need to be an auditor or you need to be an accountant, but marketing and communications is not for you. We need to get back to the childhood, to the old days when we were not afraid of saying the first thing that came to our mind, all right? So now the presentation is, is, is pointing to an oath. We, we know where it goes now. It is, it is about talking about what happened to kids when they experience the education system. And as you will see, he will develop that more and more. When, when my son was four in England, actually he was four everywhere, to be honest. I mean, uh, <laughs> we're being strict about it, wherever he went, he was four that year, but he was in the nativity play. Remember the story? <laughs> No, it's big, it's big story. Mel Gibson to the sequel, you may have seen it. I don't know. <laughs> Nativity 2. But um, James got the part of Joseph, which we were thrilled about. We consider this to be one of the lead parts. Uh, we had the place crammed full of agents and t-shirts. You know, James Robinson is Joseph. Uh, we had, he didn't have to speak, but you know the bit where the three kings come in? Now uh, they come in bearing gifts and they, they bring gold, frankincense and mare. This really happened. We're sitting there and they, I think, just went out of sequence. Because we talked a little boy afterwards and said, you know, are you okay with that? And they said, yeah, why was that wrong? They just switched. I think that was it. Anyway, the three boys came in, little four-year-olds with tea towels on their heads, and they put these boxes down. The first boy said, I bring you gold. And the second boy said, I bring you mare. And the third boy said, Frank sent this. Okay. <laughs> What these things have in common is, is that kids will take a chance. That's it. If they don't know, they'll have a go. Am I right? They're not frightened of being wrong. That's it. Now, I don't mean to say that being wrong is the same thing as being creative. What we do know is, if you're not prepared to be wrong, Listen up. you will never come up with anything original. If you're not prepared to be wrong. And by the time they get to be adults, most kids have lost that capacity. Uh, they have become frightened of being wrong. And we run our companies, this, by the way. We stigmatize mistakes. And we're now running national education systems where mistakes are the worst thing you can make. And the result is that we are educating people out of their creative capacities. Picasso once said this. He said that all children are born artists. The problem is to remain an artist as we grow up. All right, guys, I will stop it there, but that video is in Accelerate. And I'm telling you, you know, it's brilliant, that video. Enjoy the conclusion, the way he closed that presentation is genius, genius. I, I love that guy. I respect him, like one of my favorite educators. Of course, that's what I do. I am an educator. You don't need to know about educators, but that is, for me, you know, the benchmark when it comes to education. 
So keep keep looking at that later on, but we need to continue with the, the, the rest of the content, all right? So let's move on. All right, now I will share again the power. If you have any question, please, anyone, just let me know. So let's move to the next to the next to the next part of the class. All right. What is the next part of the class? You need to follow this in your accelerate, please. You, I am just doing showing this as well because that's easier for me. But in your computer, you need to press next, next, next. Don't forget about that. At the end of the class, you need to complete the lesson. The system will send me a message that you completed the lesson. The system will send a message to the school that you completed the lesson. So it's not just about being present in that in this class. It's also about following the system. You understand what I mean? The, the computer system. So as we advance, we go next, next. Don't go next, 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 next. That's not the point. The system will find out that you didn't read the program and it will not mark you as competent in that lesson. So we need to go one by one as I deliver this, this, the, the content, right? Just keep that in mind. Follow me, Teacher, computer, yeah? I can move on in the lesson. I think because you have open mind, because it says an attempt is already in progress. Yes, that's true. Good point. <laughs> Good point, Sayana. Let me move out no. from there. You are you are 100% right. You are right. Okay. Give, me, give me one Thank minute. You. I will fix that. Yes. You are right, Sayana. You are right. Yes, just let me fix that. All right, so now let's continue. All right, so let's go next. All right, now let's let's move on. What is the goal of the presentation as we discussed it before? It's not about just talking about a topic, it's about connecting, it's about bonding with our audience, all right? This is another good video that I want you guys to see from Gary V. Gary V has been my trainer for years. And I have learned a lot from this guy, all right? So watch this video. Here are some important points for you to find out more about how he presents. And Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King was, is his well-known, he's famous because how he speak is, is extraordinary, his capability to speak. I, I hope, guys, I hope that one day you have seen this speech I have a dream. I'm going to play a little bit of it for you to see. Send to you, Dr. Martin Luther King, they are. I am happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. Five score years ago. All right, that speech, I have a dream. Who knows about this? I just trying to test your general education and culture. Who knows about this? Yes, I've heard it, like parts of it in school, in the university too. So one of the most amazing things that I think um, that Martin Luther King, like he had the capacity to make the mass move, like to have faith in something, have faith in a revolution of the politics that were like structured that way in the US, like when he was alive. So yeah, he was like a good, he, he's a good, um, how can I say this? Speaker? Like, he's a good, 
he's a good example, yes, of this type of politicians that can like make people believe in change. But like in a change that has to be made, you know? Yeah, so yeah. And, and everybody, I mean, not everybody, but a lot of people have found in that speech inspiration to move masses, to invite others to participate in a cause because his recipe did work. Guys, in that time, there was not internet. There was not, there were not social media. They were not like uh, fast transportation and cars everywhere. You know, people were horses, people were in buses, but people walk days to get to that speech. So, and, and the message and how that message is delivered, you know, with the top sentence, I have a dream. Is, is, is something that changes the story of humankind. And that's why that speech is there. Please, I invite everyone to look at it as well um, when, when you guys can. All right, let's continue with the topics. But yeah, very important. And that's why that is there because these are good examples of how to deliver presentations. All right. <clears throat> All right. Now, Remember what I show you at the very beginning of this video. We need to learn how to, uh, the, of this class, sorry. We need to learn how to plan. We need to learn how to plan before we do a presentation, all right? We need to learn how to plan a presentation. Why? Because if we don't plan, we are planning to fail, hmm? all right? So what do we need to do when we plan? We need to find out how, to organize our ideas, how to organize our time, time management skills, and how to be confident and prepared to speak. So I'm going to explain this again, all right? We need to prepare our presentation. What is the first thing that we do? We select the ideas, the ideas that we will be discussing about. What were the key ideas that Ken Robinson was using in his presentation. Who remembers? Education what the, and creativity. Education and creativity. We need to do the same. So start preparing two ideas, please, because you will be presenting today. <laughs> Seriously, you will be recording a video today for you to pass this unit. Doesn't need to be done today, but next couple of weeks. You need to prepare a video and you need to do it right, properly, for you to pass this unit. I, am, um, I have a question. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Which topics can we talk um, in this video that we have to do? Good question. Please don't talk about animals. Please don't talk about the environment, the nature, or, 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 the, or the tomatoes. So I don't know. Talk about something that is business related. Talk, business talk about, related please because we are business students marketing yeah. communications is a business program all right don't talk I, you know I, I, the bear and the tiger and how they know or the, the 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 lion is the king of the jungle nothing like that all right please i want you to talk about about economy about marketing about communications about entrepreneurship about how difficult it is to be an employee or how easy it is for you to be an employee, how frustrating it is for you to pay the taxes every two weeks. Employees, they pay taxes every two weeks. Business owners in Australia, I'm talking about Australia. In Australia, business owners pay taxes how often? Who, who knows this? Who knows? Not sure. Stop it, guys. Smith Street. Who knows? Stop 15. Change. How often? Two weeks. Every what? Two weeks. <clears throat> Employees or business <clears throat> owners? <clears throat> business. Business owners. All right. Everybody, somebody yeah. else has a different opinion about that. How often employees pay taxes? I don't know. I think How employees every week. 
every time that you receive the paycheck and majority of yeah. people receive the paycheck in Australia, I'm talking about Australia, every two weeks. In Australia, every two weeks, you receive the paycheck. Before you receive the paycheck, the employer, the company, the business is deducting the tax component that you need to pay to the government. You know that? And this is something yes. that is done everywhere else. Before you receive the money, the company, your employer is deducting money to pay to the government for you, for you. But guess what happened? When you are an employer, when you are a business owner in Australia, how often you pay the taxes? Who knows? Nobody has a business here. Nobody has an ABN here. Really sad. It's not, it's not once in a year? Of course it is. And you see that difference? As a business owner, I pay my taxes every 12 months. Once in a year, I pay my taxes, which means that I can invest all that money for 12 months. I can duplicate that money if my investments are good ones. Whereas if you are an employee, you need to pay your taxes every two weeks. I don't know. I don't like that. But people don't know this. And that's why I'm telling you our education system was not created to create, to develop entrepreneurs. To, it was created to, to develop more and more employees. And that's why majority of people want to be an employee, which is so sad. Because when you are an employee, you are dependent. Dependent on what? Dependent on your employer. Your employer can fire you anytime. When you are not employed in Australia and you are an Australian citizen like myself, if you don't get a job, you get paid by the government. But the government will make you to go to courses, to find jobs, to apply for interviews. They will be on top of you. That is not nice. When you depend on government, when you depend on a company for you to have food, you are a slave. It's sad. When you have your own business, you develop the own dynamics. You develop your own challenges. You find ways to solve economic problems. But our education system was done for you to become an employee. All right, so that was my presentation. I presented two key ideas. I wasn't talking just because of the sake of, I was doing what you need to do, all right? So, Choose a topic like this. Develop two ideas or three. So introduction. My name is Santi. I will be talking about the difference between being an employee and the difference between and the difference between, between being an employee and an employer in Australia. Two ideas. That is my introduction. My name is Santi Vela. I'll be talking about the difference between being an employee and employer in Australia when it comes to paying taxes. Introduction. Done. The body, or you know, the meat, the topic being delivered. All right, being an employee sucks. Why it sucks? Because I depend. I depend on somebody else for me to survive. I have to pay my taxes every two weeks. I cannot invest that money. And I need to follow what I'm being told to do. I need to be at the office every day at 7.45. And if I need to pick up my kids, I need to ask permission to my boss. And if I want to do something else that day, I cannot do. It. And if I feel sick that day, I, I may need to go to work because I don't have more sick days available. So all of that is something that I don't like about being an employee. When, when, when I have the skills to be an employer, I give jobs to people. I help families to have an income. I develop entrepreneurship skills. I am free to, to take time off if I want to take time off. And I pay my taxes once a year. So that is the body. You develop the keywords. Conclusion. 
I invite everyone in this class. I invite everyone that is listening to this video. I invite everyone that is listening to this message to open an ABN, an Australian business number. And from the, from the moment you do that, instead of receiving a paycheck, you will be sending invoices. And there is nothing more enjoyable than sending invoices. That is my presentation. You need to do something like this. Two minutes, five minutes, but the topic should be about something that I find interesting. Business, economy, currency exchange, how the dollar is losing value, what is happening in Venezuela in terms of inflation, what is happening in Argentina with Alberto Fernandez in terms of inflation, what is happening with the euro, what is happening between Taiwan and China. Hmm? Um, we can talk about the sports industry too, maybe here with all things that we have in Melbourne, like maybe Australian Open, the Women's World Cup or something like that. Can be, be fantastic. Too. Because that is one of the most important industries in Melbourne, the sports. Yeah. Industry. Yeah. Formula Good. One. That all of that, you know, the, the Australian Open, all of that is, is something that the cricket and how the competition goes Good. with Indians and Pakistanis. Good. That's it. But some but that is business. If you if you take that topic from, from the business perspective, it will be a good presentation. All right. Right, that's what I need you guys to start preparing for. So don't forget about, about what we need to do later on. Let's continue with the rest of the class. So preparing the presentation is defining the ideas that you will be delivering and finding a method for you to deliver those ideas. What methods of communication we have? Who knows? What you can tell me? Verbal communication. Verbal communication. What else? Um, communicating using pictures. Pictures. Big, fantastic. I mean, and if you want to present like that, just showing me pictures and graphics, please do. That's great. I mean, it's very difficult. But if you are a genius for you to communicate ideas with one, have you seen the memes? Of course you have seen memes, yeah? They tell a story with one photo, one, one image. But, but how difficult is to be that creative to inspire people, to move people, to educate people, to entertain people with one image and few words. Memes, if you want to present with a meme, do it. I will be applauding you. I will be celebrating the presentation of yours. But it's difficult. But that's another method, graphics. What other methods we have? We can write something. We can develop a PowerPoint if we want. I don't like PowerPoints, to be honest, but if that's what you want to do because that makes you feel more comfortable, do it. You can, you can do a podcast. You can just give me the audio. Fantastic if you want to do a little podcast. So that's up to you, all right? But the method is something that you have to choose. My favorite method is voice. Why voice? Because voice changes. You change the tone, you go with the highs, you go with the lows. And that changes the message and the tone of what you are telling people. So that's why I use this method. Now, because of Zoom, I can use my camera as well. That is an addition. An addition that I like too, because I can look at your eye because you can look at me. So if you want to do something like that, just take your phone, Press the record button in your iPhone or phone that you have and just record yourself doing that presentation. Two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, one second. I don't know, it's up to you, but do it. And then submit that video to your assessment. Done. Hmm? So that is another way to do it. The method is up to you. All right. So we need to define what is the topic. We need to define what are the key Ideas in that topic, we need to define what is the methods and we need to define what is the duration of our presentation. And I told you about it. The duration could be one minute, could be five minutes. I don't mind. I don't mind. I love Twitter. And the reason I like, I like Twitter is because you need to say something in 240 characters. I love text messaging because you need to be very, very short, very, very, very um, uh, efficient 
when 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 you use words all right so i want you to be like twitter i want you to think that way you know less is more in what we're doing imagine i have 50 60 students imagine if everyone is giving me presentations of 10 minutes that would be horrible hmm? i will not be able to observe those presentations if you want to do it 10 minutes, go for it. If you want to do it one minute, go for it. But it has, it has to be meaty. It has to be interesting. It has to be relevant and it has to be opportune. Don't forget about that. Your presentation has to be interesting to me, has to be relevant and has to be opportune. What is happening today? Tell me about something that is happening today. Hmm? Not 10 years ago, that will not be relevant. All right, cool. Let's move on with the rest. All right, and confidence. Confidence is something that you should have. I mean, if you don't have confidence, talk to me. Let's do a one-to-one -one meeting and we talk about how I can help you to be, to be more confident. But if you have voice, if you have eyes, if you have health, if you are alive, if you are in this class, if you're in Australia, if you are young, you should have enough I don't know, like motivations to, 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 present, to present yourself as a confident person. If you have problems, if you are sick, you're having financial stress, if you are going through a bankruptcy, if you have, I don't know, sentimental problems with, with, with your partner or something, let me know. And, and you don't need to do this because how I will be asking someone that is facing problems to, to present himself, herself in a camera. No, tell me, but that is something that you need to tell me uh, separately. All right, and we find a different way for you to present or you don't present, or you talk to me. All right, cool. What you cannot do is nothing. Remember that you need to pass the assessments. All right, what is the, the, the second thing that we need to do? We need to define our audience. We need to define our audience. We need to get to know our audience, all right? We need to define what is the audience. Guys, why it is important to know the audience? Before we speak, before we give the presentation, before anybody gives a presentation, why it is important to know the audience? Because you know, if you're going to use I'm... some term, a specific terminology, it's better for us to know if the public knows or is aware already. Exactly right. That is a good point. You need to know how, what is the level, what is the academic level of the audience before you speak. Because if you go to the speak, you go to the conference, uh, to the speech, you go to the conference with, with a terminology, with an argot that is so complicated, is so complex for the audience, nobody will understand a thing. Right? So that's a good point. What else? Uh, Mariana, please. Why we need to know the audience? Um, well, like we need to know uh, what they are like related to. You know, you cannot go and talk to someone about science and they are not scientists. So you have to know like this. Um, yeah, the the audience. What what are they interested in? Wait. What are what they like? What do they do? Like, yeah. That's it. What is interesting to them? What makes them Tick, what makes them click that is super important you need to know that in advance because you need those resources in order to deliver your presentation and also to find out if your presentation is relevant or not all right so that's good too all right what else we need to know about our audience we need to know what is the language that they speak so you deliver the presentation in that language or you have a translator to support your speech, which, which could be the, the case if you go to a different country, if you go to Russia, or if you go to India, or if you go to a country that does not speak English, you may need to have the help of a translator, all right? So that is important too. Also, we need to know, and this is super important, super important, you need to know the age. What is the average age? Of your audience why we need to know the age or what is the average age of our audience why 
because in well it depends on the age uh the things that people like you cannot go and talk about like um what can i say like about new um generation things and uh for example scientologist to an old person you know like maybe they can have like another way of religion and all of that so you have to be very careful with that also because if if there are kids in the audience or if you are talking to kids you need to be very cautious with the words that you select and with the topics that you deliver all right so that's important it's very important to to know what they like what they don't like adults and we need to adapt our communication to what they do, what they like, how they act, where, where they go to eat, at what time they go to sleep and all of that, of course. But also we need to take in consideration, A, are there kids in the audience? Is this a presentation that is intended to be delivered to kids? Because if that is the case, we need to be cautious. We cannot talk about sex just like that, all right? That will be a, we cannot talk about arms just like that. We cannot talk about terror. We cannot talk about debt. Just like, we cannot talk about religion just like, we need to be very careful we, because it's not our responsibility. It's not our call. It's not in our right to give messages to kids unless parents are present, unless the parent is the filter. So let's be very careful with that particular topic. All right, cool. So we need to know the audience. Now, I'm going to tell you something that you need to know. And this is more theoretical. But for you to, for you to know the audience, you need to use three variables. Variable number one, demographic variable. Please write it down because you will need this knowledge for every other unit that we are doing. Consumer behavior, we will be talking about these three variables. Marketing strategy, we will be talking about these three variables. Marketing planning, we will be talking about these three variables. And making presentations, we will be talking, that's what we're talking today. So what are those three variables for us to get to know our audience? First variable, demographic variable. I will write it in the chat, demographic. Demographic variables, have a look at the chat. Give me examples quickly about demographic variables, everyone. Give me one. Come on, guys, you are smart. You have been in the school before. You have, you, you, you know, you speak English. You have been at the university, many of you. Give me examples of demographic variables now. Gender. Age, right. race. Age, gender, what else? Gender, race. Race, let's, let's write that in the chat, please. If you know one Religion. of them, write it in the chat, please. Go, Mariana, Isabel. If you know one demographic variable, write it in the chat. Let's use the chat, please. If you know one demographic variable, write in the chat. Religion, that is one. All right, let's keep going. Age, that is demographic variable. Race, that is demographic variable. Well done. Location, um, not. Location is not. Question. A religion can work mm. as a demographic. Yeah, it does, right? Yeah, religion, 100%. Yeah. Okay. Yes, but no location, uh, Sam, Sam, Sammy, right? We talk about that later. Income, 100% demographic variable. Education, 100%, correct. Well done, well done. What else? It could, it could be also cultural stuff. The, the socioeconomic <laughs> status, socioeconomic <laughs> status, yes, yes. <laughs> Socioeconomic status, yes. What else? Ethnicity, of course, 100%. What else? What else? We're missing a, a very important one, right? I will write it. Language. We talked a little bit about that before. Language. So let's go. Language, ethnicity, education, income, age, location, age, race, race. We are missing one that is very important, guys. Come on. Family life cycle. What do you mean with family life cycle? Yes, what do you mean with that? 
You mean if you are married, if you are single? Yes, that's correct. That's correct. Family life cycle, we call it. How do we call that one? Who knows? Mariana, how is that one called? Which one, one that, sorry? The one that is telling us about the family, about what is the status in, in that regards. Oh, it's like you're, um, if you're mm, single, yes. taken. Yes. So what is the name of that variable? Yes, um, you're right. It was social written. status? No, no, it was Marital written. status? Marital status. Marital status, yes. Very important, right? National. So when you got it, those are demographic variables. We need to know about those demographic variables before we define the audience. Guys, if you are going to talk to people, I mean, if you want to sell, let, let's imagine that you went to sell, that you want to sell um, life insurance. Guys, do you know what I mean by life insurance? Yes. Yeah. And imagine yeah. that like audience. Policy? Like, what is that, Valeria? Like a policy? Something yeah, yeah. like the yeah. health insurance? Yeah, yeah. yeah but no health. We're, we're not talking about health. We're talking about life. 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 Uh -huh. What audience is better? The audience of, you know, 18 to 25, no kids, no marriage, or the audience 30, 45 with kids and married. Which audience is better for you? 30, 45. With kids. As a... Yeah, with kids, with family, you know? Yep. Like they have yep. to secure what they have if something happens or something like that. That's it. That's why that, that variable is so important in marketing and communications. The marital status, it really tell us about what is the life cycle? What is happening with that person at that moment? So important, all right? Religion is so important too. If you can get to know if that person believes in God or not, if you can get to know if that group of people are, I don't know, they are Christian or, 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 or if they are not, <clears throat> or if they are Jews, that will give you good, indications of what you should be talking about all right all right guys we're missing one we're missing just one ah no 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 it's, it is there vanessa wrote it vanessa explain that one to us vanessa politic politic variable tell us a little bit about it bunny go ahead tell us a little bit about the one that you wrote politic politic variable I think because it's important that depend of political movement that you follow. Yes. Because, for example, I don't know, in my country, like, or left or right. Yeah. So I think it's important that is like, uh, depend of your belief in political movement, uh, we can uh, talk about it. Yep. I really want you guys to pay attention to what Vanessa said, because especially right now, that is so important. Mm. That is so imp I mean, you go to an audience and that audience, they are, they are more in the left side of politics. You know, Australia Labour, for example, USA uh, Democrats, right? If they are more in the left side of politics and you go and you talk about small government and you talk about no taxation, and you talk about uh, entrepreneurship, uh, they, uh, they will not like you. They will not like you. They will not like, so you need to be aware of it. But if you go to the other side and, and, and they are in the right side of politics, you know, Republicans, or they are more in the liberal side in Australia, which is different to labor. In Australia, it's called liberal, but they are more in the center right. Then you may talk about these topics, free tax, no tax, small government, uh, business owners, and that will be well received too. So super important, especially right now where everybody is so confused about where they should head their opinions, right or left or center, is critical, is very important. Politics nowadays are more important than ever. If you are in marketing and communication, don't ever tell me Santi, I don't like politics.
because it's not about like or dislike. It's about emotion, it's about engagement. It's about position, it's about beliefs. It's not about liking or disliking. Oh, I don't like politics. Are you a kid to tell me something like that? You may tell me I don't like the migration politics that Australia is using. I don't like the health politics about vaccination that Australia is using. I don't like the economic uh, politics about, you know, um, we um, slowing down the economy for us to reduce inflation levels. Or you may, but that is okay. But, oh, Santi, I don't like politics just like this in general. Not from one of my students. Let's be very careful with it. All right, so we have defined it, all of us, demographic variables. Well done. All right. Now let's talk about geographic variables. Now. And they are very important too. Examples of geographic variables, please. Samuel. Um, country. Uh, give me one second. The country, of course. All right, what is the location of this country? Why that is important, all right? Because if you want to talk to people that lives close to the poles, it's going to be very different when you talk to people that lives close to the equator. It's totally different. Why? Why is different, different? cultures? What is that? It could be different cultures, different mindsets. Yeah, but yeah. It's, not, it's not much about that. It's not much about culture though. It's not it's about a, it's about like the, the weather. It depends in everything. Yeah. yeah, weather conditions. Exactly. Why? Elaborate more, please, Mariana. Well, weather conditions, um, like the altitude does that the the this part where you live has. Like for example, I live, well, my country is Colombia. I live in Medellin. Yep. So I came from Colombia and then I came to this weather and I got sick when I arrived here in Melbourne. So <laughs> it depends a lot, you know, when you come right. from a different part of yeah. the world. I was last week in Spain and it was so hot. It was in summer and then I arrived here. Oh, it's so cold, you know, so so you get used to like, you know, it, it's different. Everything changes. Your skin changes like everything. So it's very important, like all this type of exactly. geographic conditions weather, altitude, how near you are to the sea and all of that. I would say like, like also from Colombia, like you say from tropical countries because here like more is about uh, stations. Like when it's like a high mountains, the people uh, have different ways to live, like behaviors that compare with the cost places. So the way you live is completely completely different you 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 have different activities to do in your free time also so true so true so true so uh, in south america uh, in the caribbean you know if 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 you if you live close to the beach you you like your music loud you know you like to have some drinks in the afternoon you go and swim the lifestyle is more relaxed. If you want food, you go and fish. You know, you don't need to be wearing jackets. You don't need to be wearing ties. You could be without shirt. You can be in your swimsuit. You, you know what I mean? You can be in sandals. Yeah. And, uh, in your car, your car doesn't need to be a very heavy duty car. It could be just a little Jeep with doors or with no doors. And it's still okay if it doesn't have doors. All right, so it, it so give us a different feeling about what we do. So if we're speaking to this group of people, we need to be aware of their lifestyles. What if what is if we talk about people in the interior, high mountain, they are more formal, they they, they are more dressed up, and they, they 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 are more cautious about how they talk and the music they is all of it is important. All right, all right, all of that is correct, but guys, please. We are missing something important. We are missing something important here for the, the for the geographic variables. We we are talking about the weather. We're talking about the altitude, but all of this is condensed by something that is called the seasons. All right, what are the seasons right. that we have? 
in the, in the countries that are close to the North Pole and the countries like Australia that are close to the South Pole. What are the name of those seasons? Give, give me the names of those seasons. Um, summer. Summer. Winter. Yeah. Winter. Autumn. Yep. Yeah. And spring. That's it. Our marketing changes 100% depending on the season of the year in Australia. So the marketing campaign for summer is totally different. It's not to the same. Yeah. So we need to understand that if we are doing marketing in a country like Australia. We need to be aware, what is the season now? So I start preparing for the next one, the, the current one too late. So when we do marketing and communications in Australia, we create campaigns and we send newsletters and the newsletter will be about the next season, not the current one. And that's how we sell, that's how we communicate ideas. So the geographic variables in a country like Australia are super important. The people that live in Melbourne and Sydney have a totally different style to the people that live in Darwin, totally different. Right? So we need to be aware of that. The people in Colombia, they have a totally different lifestyle than the people that live in the south of Argentina. All right? The people in Canada, man, or the people in Washington, Seattle, you know, those states, those USA states at the north of the country, they, have a, they, they need to protect themselves from temperatures that are extreme extreme you know in 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 some countries in canada right now you know the, 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 it's, it's, it's going back at 11 p.m so so your marketing needs to reflect that people is how is awake at 10 p.m so you may need to extend your business hours now another important thing guys don't forget about it season last three months and financial periods in australia the last three months in australia we have the quarters one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, season one, season two, season three, season four. So we try to match the campaigns to the quarters. That's something that financially speaking is very important too. All right, geographic variables, they are weather, they are location, and they are <laughs> the country, all right? Fantastic. We are missing one variable and that variable is called the psychographic Examples of psychographic variables, anyone? This one is more difficult. If you don't know, it's fine. I will tell you. But if anyone knows, please go ahead. No one knows? All right. Mm -hmm. Psychographic means how happy we are when it comes to that product to that company, to that message. That's what we need to find out. How happy, how okay we are when we are exposed to that particular company, to that particular business. Hmm? You know, I, I, I will, I, I will tell what is that? How do you measure that variable? All right, I mean, that how, measure how... is, no worries. All right, that measure is, is, is mesh, that, sorry. That variable is measured by something that is called the NPS. And the NPS stands for the net promoting score. And just double checking, just me one second. Yep. Yeah. All right. So the net promoter score. I'm going to write it. Net promoter. This is how it's measured. All right, what is the NPS, the net promoter score? Find out, or probably you have experienced this before. Once you have bought your first car, once you have bought an apartment, once you have bought your, 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 your suit or something that is a little bit more expensive than cookies and Coke, all right? Usually you receive a, a phone call from the marketing department or someone working for the marketing department and they will tell you, oh, how likely are you to uh, consider 
uh, promoting our business to your friends and family. Give me one number from one to 10. Hmm? And if you give a very high number, it's because you are very likely to promote that business to a friend, to a family member, which means that you are super satisfied with that business, with that company, with that idea, with that politician. Hmm? Whereas if you give a number of seven or, or six, you, you are very neutral. You will not do good, you will not do bad for that business. But if you give a low number, three, four, you are a detractor. You really don't like cigarettes. You know, like if, if I go from one to 10, how likely are you to, to tell your friends to smoke cigarettes? I will tell you, Samuel, from one to 10. Zero. Which means that you are a detractor. You are not a promoter. All right, which means that if I want you to, to be in my reviews, if, if I want you to be invited to my events, if I want you to, you will not be someone that will be promoting and helping my business to grow. I will be finding somebody else. So that means that you are not happy with my industry. You know, that, that sort of things. Samuel, what are you drinking? You're drinking an orange juice. Yeah. Yes. How likely are you to promote my Coca-Cola products to your friends and family? Um, two, three, maybe. Still a detractor, still a detractor. So you are not my ideal audience. <laughs> you will not be in my speech. <laughs> you know what I mean? What are you drinking, Samuel? Water, yeah? Yep. You are a detractor, my friend. But if you give me a number five, six, you are neutral. I still can convince you to talk about my products. If you give me oh, Coca-Cola, love it. Number eight, number nine. Let's invite Samuel to our next event because he will be telling her friends, his friends and his family about how good Coca-Cola products are. That's it. So that is the Net Promoters Score, NPS. Is, this is very high level, but this is how we define or how we measure psychographic variables. Psychographic variables, how we like, how we dislike, a message, a product, an industry. And we express those feelings in reviews. You know, Google reviews and all of that, that is extremely important yeah. today's marketing, really important. And that is unstructured data because it's text, it's not numbers. When you write a review, when I, you know what I mean? Samuel, uh, Mariana, everybody else. When, when I asked you from Isabel, from one to 10, how much do you like this class? Don't give me the number, right? But if I ask you from one to 10, how much you like this class, is, is, is that what? Is that a structured data or is that an structured data? Is that a structure or is an structure? If I ask you from one to 10, give me one number. The structure. It's a structure because you can measure that against other respondents. And you may have mm -hmm. average and you may find a standard deviations and so on. So it's a structured. But if I ask Isabel, Isabel, please go to my LinkedIn profile and write, write a recommendation of myself mm -hmm. as your trainer. Write it. Is that structured or unstructured? Unstructured. And it's structured because we are using words, feelings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we are using, what is what what is this emotion that we, we say something good, but we mean something bad? What, how is it? Sarcasm. You know sarcasm? Sarcasm. Santi, your class is so good, but you mean the other way. <laughs> A computer will not be able to find out what do you mean because it's unstructured. All right, so psychographic variables are usually connected to that way. And that's why Google reviews are unstructured. And that's why when you uh, tell someone something about your experience in that restaurant, that is not something that you give in numbers. You don't, you don't tell to your friend, hey, I went to that restaurant and I, and I like it seven. Or I just met, I just met this new teacher and I like it five. Or I just met uh, this new dancer. I was in the nightclub and I was dancing with this girl and I like a 10. You don't go like that. Mm? 
So psychographic variables are more related to our nature as a human. All right, beautiful. So don't forget about these three variables, geographic, demographic, psychographic for us to get to know our audience. So some speakers, before they do presentations, they ask the organizer, the organization, the person that is developing the event, please tell me about that audience. I need to know everything about them. Whereas if you are at the other side, if you are part of the audience, you do the same exercise. You visit the speaker website or you visit the LinkedIn page of that speaker for you to get to know where that speaker came from, what topics he or she speaks, what is his position, right, left, blah, 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 blah. blah. We all do this. We all need to assess and get to know uh, our audience and our interlocutors before we define a topic and speak about it. All right, cool. Guys, let's do a short break, all right? 15 minutes break, but be prepared. Why? Because in the next section of the class, we are going to be talking about how to deliver the present. Now we know how to plan it, right? What are the topic, the, the key ideas, the method, the duration, and the audience. Now we know, we plan it. Next topic, once we return from the class, uh, break, how to talk, how to deliver, how to express your opinions, how to use your voice, how to use the camera, how to, and then how to review it. And then we do another break and then we return to the class and we do the assessments. We have an observation assessment to do and we have a video to submit to the platform, which is something that you can do today if you have time or you can do maximum in the next two weeks. All right, because at the end of each class, then you have two weeks for you to deliver the assessments that you are being asked to deliver. This class make presentations is only for this week. Next week, we have a different class, all right? And the next week, a different class. So we need to be prepared for this dynamic. This goes for the first three classes of this program. Then all other classes, two weeks. One topic, two weeks. But for the first three classes of this program, only one week. So make presentation is not a very difficult topic. That's why it's part of the baseline. This is not so difficult to understand. Everybody knows what the presentation is. So one week, all right? How to prepare the presentation, how to deliver the presentation, how to assess the presentation. We have learned how to prepare the presentation. After the break, we do how to uh, deliver the presentation and how to assess the presentation. We go for a break. We do the assessments. Done this class. In the next week, we do something else. Enjoy your break. I will see you in 15 minutes. Thank you.
Okay, guys, came back to the class, please. I hope you, you have enjoyed the break, but now we need to return to the class. All right, so. Now I need you to go to the next section, which is the liver presentation. So click on it. It may look a little bit different in your platform, but go to the liver presentation. And let's start with the number with the number five. Let's go to the number five. <clears throat> All right, we need to discuss about the following. One of the most commonplace pieces of speaking advice is to be yourself. No, you should not be stiff or you look as if you were on the way to a guillotine. But you are performing a professional act. You are an actor on a stage. So let's talk a little bit about this. When you are doing a presentation, what do you think? You should be yourself or you should be someone else, somebody else. I will be dividing the group in two and you will be talking about one of these perspectives and then we define what is the right one. So just join your groups and then I will tell you which is your topic. You need to have your cameras on. Please join your groups now. Join your groups, please. Valentina, join your group, please. <clears throat> Natalia, Mariana, Itza, join your groups. Okay, guys. <clears throat> So now we need to deliver the presentation, all right? We don't need to prepare it, we have prepared it. Whatever is the topic, whatever are the key ideas, whatever is the time, whatever, whatever is the delivery method, you already know what is, what is your audience. So all good, we, not, we have prepared the presentation, whatever it is. Now we need to deliver that presentation. We need to be on a stage, you are on a stage. You, or you are in the classroom, or you are like me in the Zoom. I don't know. Or you are in your company and you want you, you need to present your company to potential investors, or you need to present your products to some clients in Singapore and you are in an event. I don't know, whatever you need to present. When you present, do you need to be yourself? Or do you need to be someone else? You need to do role play. All right. And then so, talk about right. it. Don't tell me anything yet. Okay, so don't don't you don't need tell to be someone. You cannot lie. You need to be an actor. And because maybe some of the topics that you're talking about, you don't agree with them, but you still need to explain them and see why your point of view is positive or why you do you think that. Topic that you're talking about is good for the company or for the investors. So you, you try to convince them um, with your emotions, with your knowledge, why that topic is, is ben will benefit them. 
All right, good, good. Uh, yeah, yeah, you need to be an actor. You need to be someone else. When you present, you cannot be yourself. You cannot. I mean, I, I want you to think about artists, you know, when they, when they are playing the guitar, when they are singing, or when they are performing an act in front of, of, a, of a thousand people. You know, they are not like this. They don't talk like this in the houses. They don't sing like that in the houses with their friends. They are dancing. They are wearing, you know, clothes that have sparkles and lights or very many, many skirts. They don't dress like that in a normal way. So when, 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 when we are presenting, we need to become someone else. We need to be the, oh, we need to be the best version of ourselves, which is not what we are not normally. When, when you are speaking, you need to kill it. You need to be the best of the best. You need to be in a different status, in a different mindset. Otherwise, nobody will believe you. Nobody, nobody you will not convince anyone. It's, it's, you need to be someone else, all right? So well done, Samuel. You need to talk about this for five minutes. You need to find ideas why you need to be someone else. You need to give me examples. Uh, you know, a politician, a musician, what they do, how they become someone else, how they, how, how they prepare in front of a mirror to be someone else, how they go to different classes, lessons about public speaking or, or how to use body language or how to pronounce or how to uh, learn a different language to be someone else. I'm being someone else. I'm being someone else. I don't like this. I mean, I like this. I like this role that I'm playing. <clears throat> because because I like it, you know, but this is not what I do on my day-to-day -day life. I have a business, I have a family, and, you know, I speak in Spanish mostly. So this is an act, but it's a good act. I want it to be a good act because I'm communicating ideas and concepts. Talk about all of this with the rest of the, of the course. Okay. Thank you. Oh, uh, Vale, how are you? You need to join on. You need to join one group, Vale. Yeah, please. I just having a problem with my internet, so that's why I'm just here alone. Let me see how can I help you. Give me, give me, that's okay. Give me one minute. Thank you. To see how can we move you to one group? Okay. Tina Fau, Valeria Sanchez. Try to join now, Vale. To the public. All right, guys, what do you think when you present, when you are in a presentation, when you are a speaker, when you are on a stage, you need to be yourself or you need to be someone else? Ourselves, Santi. Why? Um, okay, we, we think that um, because if we are talking by us or yeah, by, by ourselves, we can express better the ideas or just to be like sincere. Okay, that's a good I don't know if something else can, can say something else. No? For me, okay. half and a half. All right, interesting too, interesting too. Right, what, what I, but, but you know, there is no right or wrong here. That's the good thing about this system of education. No one is right, no one is wrong. We just discuss ideas and we find what is our position about a particular concept. So good point. There is not a, a I mean, look, what, what I can tell you about this, because I have done this many, many times, you know, like I have been a conferencist, I have been a speaker, Different countries, China, Singapore, Australia, South America, Venezuela, North America. I had, I have, I do, I do work as a speaker. In fact, let me show you something. Let me show you something here. All right, can you see my screen? Can you see my photo? Yep. Yes. Yeah. All right, cool. So this is my website, santivela.com. All right, this is my site. And this is my work experience. Here. This guy is Gary Vaynerchuk, by the way. If you don't know who is Gary Vaynerchuk, you should, especially because you are doing marketing. Anyone knows who is Gary Vaynerchuk here? 
No? no. All right. I, I will, I, I, you need to know who is, he's one of the top marketing minds in the planet. And, and we and we do conferences and we talk. So here is my work experience. Here is my education. And here is conferences. If you click here, you will find out that I have I have been doing conferences about different topics, you know, with La Trobe University, in with Intrigue in, in Australia. Uh, this was in London, this was uh, for Torrance University in Australia, and uh, this was in Sydney. Uh, this was in Sydney as well. A lot of them in Sydney. This was in Singapore, I think. I know this was in Melbourne. But I have done many conferences, guys. Look, this is this is you know, each one of these flyers is a different conference I have participated in. All right, so I do this as part of my profession. I know about how to speak in public. And if I present myself as a Santi Vela, the, 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 the person, I fail. That's my particular case. If I present myself as Santi Vela, the, 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 the normal citizen, the, the father, the, the friend, I fail. I cannot do it like that. I need to become a superhero. I need to become a superstar. I need to become a killer. A killer in the good sense of the word, you know, active, powerful. I need to raise my voice. I need to be very straight. I need to dress properly. You know, I become someone else for those 20 minutes. You know, I, 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 I bring all the energy I have and I condense it to be a star those 20 minutes. But that is what I do. For these classes that I give you, I do the same. You know, the classes, uh, I, probably you have noticed that I am a little bit different to your traditional teacher, yeah? Your traditional teacher goes with a PowerPoint and yeah, blah, 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 boring stuff. And that, they don't change, it's, 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 but I do change. I become someone else. And when I finish my class, I am super tired because I, 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 I return to my normal Santi. Um, and the normal Santi doesn't use this shirt. This is show, you know? The normal Santi, you know, look at this. This is show. I don't, you know, I don't do this. But I do it for you. And I don't use my hands all the time like I do with you. Because I, I know how to do this. And teaching, speaking, lecturing is the same thing. It's the same thing. Is, is delivering a message for people to learn or for people to be entertained or for people to change, whatever is the case. So that's, that's my recipe. But I respect if your opinion is, no, I, I, I am so good. I am so confident. I am so happy with what I am as a person that I will not change an inch. I will present myself as the person I am. But if you say that, if you do that, you need to be really, really good. You need to be really good at what you do. You need to know a lot about the topic you're talking about. You need to have experience in that industry. You know, you need to be so, you need to be a natural. Because, but if you are not that person, you need to dress up, you need to change your tone, you need to use resources, which is what I do, which is what I, it's not because I am not an expert, it's because I feel better being someone else. I am also an artist, seriously, I play the guitar, I sing, I play flamenco, and I, I when, when I go and I sing flamenco, and I change my voice, it's, it's a different Santi, you know, and, and, and I enjoy changing roles, but that is something personal, you don't need to do it. I need you to talk about what you have told me, uh, uh, Valentina, about honesty, about not changing for the sake of changing, about being honest with your audience and not trying to escape or hide yourself in, in a different personality or different mask. Okay, well done. So talk a little bit with your group about that. And then in two minutes, I will call back everyone and you will be exposing your position.
Hej. Pedro. Hello. How are you, Pedro? I'm fine, and you? Very good, my friend. Very, very good. Oh, very interesting. Your website and have many <laughs> stuff about the culture, the Tai Chi. I made the Tai Chi in Brazil, and oh. uh, I made the Tai Chi with the trees in Brazil. I am producer and director, and I made uh, this venue in Brazil, the same venue. Wow, that's awesome, man. What a coincidence. <laughs> yeah, very constant. That's good, Pedro. Well done, man. What, what are you doing now? Are you in Melbourne or Sydney, Pedro? Melbourne, Melbourne. All right. How do you like it? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like it. Um, yeah, but uh, I'm looking for uh, opportunities in the cinema or and the other stuff uh, about the communication. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. It's a very, very nice industry. Communications is huge and it's very, very artistic too. And it's related to music, it's related to arts, to movies, to books, to presentations. Of course, marketing plays an important role as well, as we all have a brand. That's what I show you my website. Did you guys receive my message with the website? Yeah. Um, we were like in this other chat, uh, in this other group. So, well, I don't see it. Right. Yeah, we didn't see it. Let me send it to you guys. All right. I, I believe, I believe in personal branding. I believe that that's the marketing part. All right. Yeah. We all have a personal brand. It's very important to build it. Yeah. Very important, very important, because that's what uh, our parents gave us when, when when we were born. You know, they thought a lot. They thought a lot about our name. They, they, it was not like oh, just just let's put whatever name to this to this to this baby. Now. They really thought about it. So so we need to honor that, and we need to believe that our our name, uh, if if it's properly branded, could become a well known name. And in doing so, we are honoring our lives and, 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 and what our parents planned for us. So, so yeah, that's my website. I have been doing education technology, digital marketing, entrepreneurship, strategy, uh, cybersecurity for almost 20 years in Australia. That is um, a little bit of what I do. The person in the first page is Gary Vaynerchuk. If you don't know who is Gary V, guys, Anyone, no one knows who is Gary V here, yeah? Or, or anyone knows? No one knows. Yeah, I, I know about the Gary V. Yeah, yeah, you know about it. But apart, apart from Pedro, no one else? So please follow Gary Vaynerchuk. In, in, in the internet, you will find a lot of value. Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk is my inspiration. He's my partner as well. We talk a lot. Is a Russian guy? Yeah, he's Russian, but he moved yeah. to New York when he was four or five years old. And he created a, a, a marketing and communications a, a outstanding media company in New York. And, and he's one of the most recognized, recognized speakers in the world when it comes to social media marketing, just marketing and communications. So that's- Sandy, yeah. Um, I have a question. Taking a look at your page, oh, it seems so good. I will check it out when we finish the class. Thank you. Um, um, did you work in Kenworth? I did work in Kenworth, yes. Oh, where? In Basewater. Basewater is uh, 30 minutes away from Melbourne. Oh, good. So yeah. good. Do you know about And the where Kenworth? are you from? Or originally from Colombia. Oh, good. Which yeah. city? Medellin. That's where you are. Mm. Or just where mm. you're from. Good. <laughs> yeah. Good. Thank you. Yeah, so related much. to one of Ken Words. Well, I don't know if you know him, Jaime Pineda. Jaime Pineda. Ooh, but, but where in, in Melbourne, in Australia? No, in Medellin. He I'm owns Medellin. Ken Words, like in Colombia. Ah, no, no, I don't. Because uh, I, my region is Asia Pacific. So I need to. Mm, so good. Uh, it's Australia, New Zealand, and PNG. Hmm. No, that, right. that, that, that was my region. I'm no longer working for Kenworth, though. I worked for Kenworth for seven years. Oh, good. 
for seven years. It was, oh, one, one of the best experiences in my life. I love the product. Very proud of, of, of what we did with the product there. It's, Very good. it's a legendary, legendary brand and one of the most important uh, industries in Australia. You know, the distance, the, the, the landscape in Australia, we need those yeah. trucks for the logistics that we need to do in Australia. So highly- It's a very important part in Australia, right? Well, transportation, trucking in Australia is huge. Yeah. Because of the, the vastness of, of the territory. Oh, good that you know that brand. Is is I I love Kenwood. The brand itself is extremely inspiring, and the product quality is superb. Yeah, um, thank you for for noticing that. Um, and by the way, you know, like Kenwood is a good business to follow if you are in Melbourne. Like they have a lot of opportunities for marketing people. Um, so good, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, what we were talking. All right, cool, guys. So. When we present, we need to choose. We need, to, or we could be somehow in the middle. That's okay. But one option is to be ourselves. An other option is to be someone else. All right. So, who who was in the group that the topic was to be ourselves? I reckon it was Valentina. Yeah. Valentina, can you tell the rest of the group why it is important to be ourselves when we speak? Yes, Andy, of course. Uh, what I think is that we can express better ourselves than being a different person. And for me, it's like being honest with the public. And also when you get out the, the room, we spoke with the girls that it's also because if it is difficult for us to, to recognize ourselves, uh, we think that is also difficult to make or to create a different person, you know? Wow. Wow. All right, cool, cool. Good point, good point. So Valentina is telling us, no guys, we should be ourselves first, all right? And that is okay. There is no right or wrong here. I have a different position, yes, but Valentina's position is very, very important too. Anyone else? Anyone else uh, wants to add something to what Valentina said about the importance of being ourselves when we talk, when we present? All right. So the next, the next group. All right. The topic was: we need to be someone else. We need to be. We need to have an alter ego. Huh? We need to become that ideal person that we always wanted to be. All right, we need to talk like that, like that person that we admire and that, you know, we can do something similar so we have a similar outcome. So, or, or, or we, you know, adorn ourselves uh, with ideas, with uh, techniques for us to be more, 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 uh, more visible to the audience, for, for us to be more engaging to the audience. Hmm? Who, who has the other group and who can tell me about the importance of not being ourselves but being somebody else? Well, I was in the other group, so what I'm going to say is that um, some of us that we talk, we agree that you need to kind of act if you want to convince your audience. And that's good because if there's an idea that you do not commute with it, that will help you to express better. Wow. Or to, I don't know, to um, be more open and, and see the point of view of the audience. And because if, if you don't like the topic or the arguments that you're giving, um, how to say it, you will know like the weakness or strong points of that, of that point of view. So that will help you. Because if you mix feelings with business, that can be a problem. I love it. I never thought about this like that, never. But I really like what you have said. So what Samuel is telling us, no, 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 we need to be someone else. Why? Because you may be telling something that you don't agree with. And you, and you know that that happens to us when we work for a company that we don't like. 
happens all the time. Sometimes we work for companies that we don't like. Sometimes we work for companies that we don't we don't consume what they produce. You know, and but but we are in marketing. We need to talk about that. So we use that resource and we become someone else to feel less guilty about telling others about the benefits of a product that for ourselves don't have any benefit. All right, fair enough, good point. But also Samuel says something really important. We have weaknesses. We all, we all have weaknesses. So we can change that weakness for an strength by becoming someone else. And we don't need to expose that weakness to the, to the scenario, to the, to the audience. So when we hide it, we are not ourselves. We are becoming someone else that does not have that weakness. That was brilliant, son. That was brilliant, son. Now, another important thing here is if you want to be yourself, be yourself, but make sure that you are really good at what you do that you are very confident, that you are well-known, that you have a brand, you have a story that supports you, you know, that, that, that you have the pergamins, that you have the education, that you have the work experience. So you are a natural. You just go freely and you present as you are. All right, cool. But if you are not there yet, fake it until you make it. Have you heard that expression? Have you heard the expression, fake it until you make it? Yes. In marketing, we need to play with that. Because we create a mountain in marketing, all right? And we decide how tall that mountain will be. This is our decision, how tall that mountain. It could be this tall, it could be this tall, all right? And we need to tell others, hey, look, I will make it up there, even if we are not there yet. And if we start telling people that we one day will be there, we are not going to get the traction that we want. We may want to tell them we are already there. And then we work out, we do back engineering in order to find ourselves in that journey. All right, Richard Branson. Everything that I'm telling you is from Richard Branson. Losing My Virginity is one of the most interesting books that I have ever read. All right, so I do that. You know, when I present, I am a different Santi and I become an artist and I become an entertainer, and I become an intellectual, and I become something beyond, it works for me. But it doesn't need to work for you. If you want to present yourself as you are, just do it. But again, you need to be a good, a good, uh, I don't know, person, professional, whatever it is what you are doing. All right, cool. That was a group discussion, which is part of the of the of the lesson that we do, which is important for us to do the group discussions. Now let's continue with the with the next part of the class. Let me see what it went. Just give me one second. I lost. We are in the second part, or where I don't know if I just got my. Let, let me see because I just. I just lost my class. Give me one second. Sorry about this. Okay, got it. All right. I got it now. All right, we are, yes, yes, we're in the second part. So we have done prepared presentations. We are in the second part, which is delivery presentations. Good. All right. All right, this is the Sarah's case study. This, this case study, guys, is about how important, how important is for you guys to embrace technology nowadays. That's all. I will, we will not be doing it because it will take us too long and we need to do the assessments. But guys, you need to be prepared to do presentations like we are doing now in Zoom or in Teams or online. You know what I mean? So you need to become really good at using this little thing that you have here, which is the camera. 
You need to understand the lighting. You need to understand what is a good background. You need to understand that you need to dress up, you know, in order to be visible in the camera in the best possible way. That is an important skill nowadays. You need to understand that if you want to be, you want to look good in, in Zoom, you need to have a good webcam. That's it. You need to try to find out how to get yourself with a good equipment for you to be able to present online. All right. And that is just part of the business nowadays. Remember, this is a business class. I'm not talking about this for personal purposes. I'm talking about this for business purposes. So for business purposes, we need to have the technology and we need to have the software. We need to have the hardware and we need to have the software. So what is the hardware? The computer, the iPhone, the camera, the webcam, all of that, the lighting, that sort of things. What is the software? Understanding that there is software that will help us to, to, to do this, like Zoom. So if you don't have Zoom, I, I, everybody has Zoom now because you are in this class, but a lot of people don't know yet about how to use Zoom or how to use Teams or how to use Google Meetings or all these sort of things. We need to become really good at this. So that case study is about how Sarah was really good presenter and now she's using these digital tools in order to continue being a good presenter. Mm -hmm. All right, now let's go to the last part of this of the lesson, which is review the presentation. Let's go to the point number eight. And let's check if we have done this. All right, so when let's imagine that we prepared the presentation. Let's imagine that we already delivered the presentation. Now we need to review how that delivery went. So things that we need to look for, things that we need to, 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 to analyze. Did our presentation Tell a story with a clear purpose, yes or no? Because if <clears throat> our presentation didn't present that <clears throat> story, the, the purpose of the presentation was not clear, we fail in that presentation. So were the transitions between chapters, between topics done properly? You know, like if, if, if you recall, you know, when Ken Robinson was, was presenting this short story about the girl, uh, that was painting an image of God, he was transitioning from both topics, education and creativity in a very smart way. So did we use stories to achieve that? Did we use transitions to achieve that? So it's not like, first, this is my topic and this is my second topic, that is not good. You know, we need to use smooth techniques in order to transition from topic to topic. Stories, will help us to do that, that transitioning. All right, that is helping us to evaluate the presentation. Did we use visual aids, handouts, you know, like documents to give to the people when <clears> we do the presentation? Did we use visual aids? Let's talk about that for one second. What is visual aids? What is a visual aid in a presentation? Mm, a picture could be. And usually that picture goes where? Um, like to the background or? Yeah. Yep. What is the software that we use to present those pictures and those words? There are many softwares. What is the use. most popular one? The basic one is PowerPoint. I don't want you guys to use PowerPoint from now on. I want you to- Like Canva? Canva? Illustrator uh -huh. works too. Illustrator. Um, there is one that is called uh, Trello. Trello works too. Trello works. Guys, just explore different things. I mean, I mean, Word. Word. Really? Like, is this. We have too many options. We have. Let's explore those mm -hmm. options. That's amazing. I, hmm? But also, also explore. Explore not using visual aids. Also explore that option. Seriously. Not using visual aids. Yes, please, please do. Please do. You can use audio. It's good too. Like what you said, podcast is a huge element right now. Why so good? Because a lot of people is busy doing things, doing sports, cooking, and they don't have eyes to dedicate. To like that if you're school. walking, if you're walking, you cannot be seeing your phone. You can exactly be listening. Right. Yeah. If you walk in the CVD and you're in a rush, you have to be just listening, not seeing an image. Exactly right. And that's why podcasting 
is an underrated method for you to communicate. But people that is smart, people that is making a change in the world, they are using podcasting because they know that busy people, they cannot dedicate two hours or one hour to the screen and, and, and they are busy doing something else, but you know, audio is there to facilitate the interchange of ideas. So yeah, but also guys, I'm going to tell you something, right? A lot of bad speakers, a lot of bad teachers, you know that bad teachers exist, yeah? Have you, have you met bad, bad teachers, yeah? Yeah, yeah. A lot of them, they hide, they hide themselves, they hide themselves behind PowerPoint presentations. You know, and, and, and that's all. They think, oh, I have the PowerPoint, I will be able to deliver that topic. If that person can deliver the topic without a PowerPoint presentation, that person really knows about that topic. So try to ex try to push yourself to that limit. <clears throat> try yourself to, to one day present without a PowerPoint. Just the whiteboard and one marker, two markers, and try to deliver the topic without having a, a visual aid. And that will push you to your limits of creativity and, and, and problem solving. Right? So, so just take that in consideration, please. That's why, please, for, for, the, for the assessment, if you can, just the camera and your face. No PowerPoints, no any other visual aid. Try to talk to me without having to hide yourself in nothing but your own words. All right, let's go to the next part. <clears throat> All right. And How did just how, yeah? Sorry, just no. to clarify, uh, we have uh, two weeks for delivering that um, assessment, right? Correct. Okay. The way the way this works is the following, guys. Okay. As soon as we finish one unit, as so as soon as we finish one unit, count the next Sunday. All right. So today today is Friday, isn't it? Yes. So <clears throat> move yourself to, to this Sunday, two days, Saturday, Sunday. From that Sunday, you need to count two weeks until the next Sunday. That Sunday, you cannot submit the assessment anymore. You know what I mean? You have two weeks starting not today, but starting the Sundays. The system starts the Sundays. Is that clear? Now, if you don't present the assessment, you need to tell me what happened. If you don't tell me what happened, the school will charge you for a late submission, right? <laughs> but I'm going to be super sincere here. If I were you, I would be doing the assessment straight away in the class or, or after yeah. the class or tomorrow. And then you forget about this for, yeah, you forget about it. I have students that are so organized, that are so organized that when we finish the program, they already finish all the assessments. And they are like, Santi, we finished, send me the, tell the school to send me the certificate. Whereas I have the students that after they finish the program, they need three months more to complete no. the assessments and they have to pay hundreds of dollars to the school and it's horrible. So do the class, do the assessment. You forget about that topic. Now you're ready for the next topic. The, the mind is fresh. You are not thinking about the past. It's fantastic. All right, All right cool. All right, important one, what was the feeling of the room when you left that room? Were they inspired? Were they talking about you? Were they motivated? Were they convinced? What, what was the impression? What people, you know, what people tell about you when you are not present is what really matters, all right? And you need to measure that somehow. How we measure that? With something that is called a CTA. Anybody knows what is a CTA? Um, it's a call to action. It is a call to action. Who was this? Is it when you um, when you talk, uh, when you tell for the people uh, about have one action after after the marketing, you know? But it's like a 
when you example hey subscribe in my channel it's like uh, after you you you're inviting yeah, someone to do something Fantastic. yeah for some he's giving an input for doing something after that yes and we need to remember what pedro what valeria what maria what you have said in the following context when you finish your presentation please always finish that presentation with a c t a always always it's like a religion thing and mm -hmm. what would be that cta when you finish the presentation visit my website this is my website or subscribe to my youtube channel and you offer the link in the PowerPoint or, or in the text message that the administrator is using for everybody that is attending, they receive the text message with the YouTube link. Or buy my book. Or I invite you to my next conference that is in Sydney in two weeks and you have 20% discount. Or at the end of the conference, I will be in X, Y room. Uh, talking one-to-one -one with anyone that wants to know more about what I do. Whatever, you know, but please, guys, you need to continue the interaction at the end of your presentation. I'm going to give you one of the most important secrets in marketing. We marketers, we don't have the right to end the journey. I'm going to repeat it for you to remember this. We marketers, we communicators, we business people, call it as you want. We do not have the right, which means that we should not be the ones ending the journey. Ending the journey. Imagine that someone goes to your house. Someone goes to your house to visit you. What do you do? What do you do? You allow that person to decide when that person wants to leave your house. Or after 31, one hour, one foot, whatever, you go and say to that person, look, it has been one hour, you should go now. What do you do? You don't do this. You allow the person to end the journey. Why? Because that is you being polite. That is you using something that is called emotional intelligence. You know, Samuel, Samuel, Samuel was telling us about how important it is to, is to be someone else. So we can put ourselves in somebody else's shoes. Somewhere, remember that you were saying something around that? Yeah, yeah, you're right. That is called yeah. emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is when we put ourselves in somebody else's opinion, mindset, shoes, and we allow them to be what they want to be. We don't manage the journey. So when we do presentations, that is not an exemption. When we finish a presentation, we don't go and say, okay, bye, goodbye. This is the last day that you will see that you will know about me. Goodbye. No. Thank you for coming to my presentation. I hope that you have enjoyed this class. I hope that you have had a good time here with me tonight or with me today, whatever is the hour that you are in. If you want to know more about me, please, this is my email. Write an email to me. If you want to connect with my team, this is my website. If you want to buy my product, this is my Amazon link. If you want to come to my next conference, my next conference will be in Sydney in two weeks. If you want to have a one-to-one -one meeting with me, this is the Calendly link for you to schedule that Calendly meeting. If you, I, I don't know, but you want to subscribe, you want to buy, you want to download the PDF, you want to join my next course. Always, you need to finish your presentation with a CTA, which means that the audience, now they are in power to decide if they want to leave the room without doing anything, and they are in the right to do that. Or if before they leave the room, they join your YouTube channel, they, they connect with you on LinkedIn. Imagine that, that CTA. Oh, thank you for coming to my presentation. Let's connect in LinkedIn before you leave. That is a good CTA. Please don't forget about this because this is one of the top secrets for successful presentations, which is at the end of it, a CTA. What is a CTA? A call to action. We will be using CTAs in the entire program, by the way. Sandy, a call to action could be as well, just leaving like a question, an interesting question to the people as well, right? Because it gives us like something for thinking about after that. 
So they will remember you because of that. Of it. It's oh. just something interesting or really useful for doing after the conference. Imagine how good is that? Imagine how good is to leave an open question for people to think about when they leave the room, when they leave the classroom, why this is so good? Because they will be thinking about what you say it. They will be thinking about you for the next two, three hours. So you are not the one ending the journey. That's all. Just remember, somebody goes to your house and they are visiting you. You don't tell people when to leave. You wait for them to decide when they want to leave. The Imacrian communications, we should follow that dynamic and we should create an environment for our audience to live when they feel to live or hopefully not to live. And they become our customers, they become our advocates, they become part of our group of followers, whatever it is the case. Well done. All right. All right, cool. So this is, we are now reviewing our presentation, all right? Now, the second part of this is we need to ask for feedback. All right, we need to ask for the feedback, guys. Once we finish with the presentation, once we finish with the class, we need to ask people or we need to ask someone in the audience or we need to ask a colleague, hey, what do you think about my presentation? What can I improve? What can I do better next time? What can I do better next time? What was the highlight of my presentation? What was the lowest point of my presentation? How was my time management? How was my voice? How was my attitude? How, how I was looking? Give me something. Ask for feedback. <laughs> Asking for feedback is super important, but don't take feedback personally. And don't obey feedback. That is important too. Not because people is telling you, hey, look, you were using a red shirt today. And next time you should be using a black one because that is more corporate. No, don't pay attention. If you use it a red shirt, you may have a reason why that red shirt is better than the black one. It's not about obeying and telling people to tell you what you should do. It's about receiving information for you to analyze and then make decisions about that, All right? That's how the feedback is used. Feedback is not used to obey. Otherwise, don't ask because it's more likely that that will affect you. But if you use feedback in order to analyze what should be your next move, that is being smart. <clears throat> All right, we're about to finish this, guys. One more point. And then, of course, make the changes that you need to do for the next presentation. All right. So this process is about constant improvement and will help us to create, evaluate, analyze, apply those changes, understanding why we did those changes and remembering what we should be doing the next time. All right, guys, so this is a full class, which is what we just did. Hmm? The class will be recorded, has been recorded, so you can visit this class anytime you want later on. Also, you can visit back the, the, the presentation in Accelerate anytime you want. Now we have finished. We are going to a break now. After the break, all right, we, we will be doing the assessments together. If you want to do the assessments with me, fantastic. All right, you, you save time, especially for the observation assessment, it's important to be with your teacher. If you don't want to do the assessments with me, do them later, which is fantastic and as well. I don't have any problem with that. But what really matters is that you stay somehow until the end of the class because I will be calling attendance at the end of the class. Right, and you want to have a good profile in Accelerate. The profile in Accelerate is built with assessments and with attendance. Enjoy the break, and I will see you in 15 minutes for the assessments, okay? Any questions before we leave? No, mm. that's okay. So we should meet at 12, um, five, zero that's, five. Yeah, that's exactly right. Exactly that time, yeah. Okay, right. One, good. one question, Santi. <coughs> um, what time do you finish today the lesson? You're muted. We 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 finish. We 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 basically we finish. The lesson is done. You know what I mean? The lesson is okay. done. But I will be dedicating a little bit more of time for me to show you, for me to help you with the assessments. For me to tell with you. With the video you, that we have to do. With the video and all of that. And all of that. Because this is a one-week class, right? 
So that's why I will be helping. I will be help. I will be just working with you a little bit more for this particular unit because this is just one week unit. But if you okay. want to, if, if you cannot come back, just let me know and it's all good. I, 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 once I call the attendance, I will mark you. You don't need yeah, to- Yeah, I can stay until 12.30, but after that I need to leave. No worries. Let's, for everyone, let's make it up to 12.30. 12.30 we finish, okay? But again, if you need to finish now for any reason, let me know, give me your name okay. and I mark the attendance. It's all good.
Guys, um, if anybody is listening to what I said, why do you have all the phones in the mess in the? Oh, I asked them. Well, in the other group when we had this part to talk about things, um, we were just like saying that it will be fine if we shared our um numbers to create a WhatsApp group and meet each other because, well, what I know is that we're based in Melbourne because this course was supposed to, well, present, like face-to-face, -face, you know? Mm -hmm. That's a really good idea. That is a really good idea, well done. Use that group, mm -hmm. talk about your assessments, talk about whatever you want to, that's great. Santi, I have a question. Um, mm -hmm. Now that we're talking, about that, about that the course is going to be face-to-face -face because, well, because, well, that, that's what I, like, I came to Melbourne to do this course face-to-face, -face, you know? So, well, I have talked with the marketer from Lonsdale and she told me that the course should be like face-to-face -face from July on. So, yeah, I just wanted to confirm with you what's going to happen or I don't know. What I what I can tell you is that if if the class is with me, it will be online. If the class is with me, it will be online. Um, I don't know. I don't know if there are other classes, other teachers. It may be, it may be, it may be. Uh, but if if the class is with me, it will be a hundred percent online. That's 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 what I can tell you. What are, yeah. what are you what are you saying is that all that we are here are enrolled in an online course? A hundred percent, a hundred percent, yes, yes. So these classes with me are online, but if, if, if for any reason you prefer the face-to-face -face interaction, then you need to discuss it with the school and I'm pretty sure they will find you a different trainer. Uh, again, the classes that I give because of my work and, um, responsibilities and commitments are online. But there are plenty of good teachers and likely there will be another classes if you really want to be in a classroom environment. Well, what I can tell you- But in this yeah? IV, well, in this IV that I have chosen this IV of marketing and communication because I'm doing my career in social communication out there oh. in Medellin, in AFIT. Yeah. I'm in the seventh semester of my career. I'm om I have almost finished my career. And I came, of course, here to Melbourne to do this course well. And you're a good teacher. I like the class so much. It seems very good with you. But yeah, I think that I need this face-to-face -face interaction. And I already like went to Lonsdale here in Melbourne two times on yeah. Monday and on Tuesday. And I spoke with them. So what I do have not clear is if that, well, I want this course because this is why I chose this course because it's related to my career. Course, so yeah. yeah, I need to know, like, I don't know if maybe you know which, who, who can I talk to clarify the situation or just with my marketer or with who? So you're talking to the marketing manager at Lonsdale? Um, Hasi. Hasi, uh, Hasi. Hasi, she's on a she's Hasi. On a Hassi's from Spain, isn't it? Yeah, I think I know Hassi. Sí. Yeah. I don't know. I I can't I can't tell you anything uh, like because uh, I just don't know. Like my my agreement with London is online, but again, probably you have noticed it is because uh, yeah, it, it is it is a different dynamic with my classes in terms of knowledge and experience and so on. Uh, you may you may. I mean, it is 100% understandable that if you went to Melbourne, it's because uh, you want to have a one-to-one -one interaction or face-to-face -face interaction with your trainer. That's completely understandable, but you need to discuss that with the school. Okay. It's, uh, it's out of my realm. I, I just don't know. Yeah. If, uh, I understand. I just don't know. So that I is something, sorry, Mariana, that you will need to discuss uh, with, with the school, okay? Got it. Thank you. If Got after it. a while you think that you should be returning to this class, probably you can do that as well. I don't know. Just talk to the school and um, if, if they don't solve anything for you, then then talk to me again. And, and in that case, I will find a different way to help you. But in terms of hierarchies, what you need to do right now is talk to the school first, 
they should be able to help you. If they cannot help you, then talk back to me to find out what I can do for you, okay? Yeah, but in the moment I will stay in this class, I will, I will see what happens in July. That's what I'm like doing, okay? Beautiful. So I'll be like staying here. I will see what happens in July. If we return what the Institute says, and then I, I will make a decision, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Santi. Pleasure, entire pleasure. Okay, guys. Santi, now, is this yeah? the only schedule that for your classes? Fridays, 9 a.m., 12. Friday, 9 to 12? Yeah, today oh, okay. I'm because... You don't have any other schedule. No, that is my my class. That is my class okay. with 9 to 12, which is which is yeah, it's once a week. So it's just one class a week. Uh, but yeah, we need to come to the class and we need to complete the assessments. That will give you more flexibility in terms of what you need to do apart from studying. But yeah, that is the time that I have available for my classes with loans 9 to 12. Okay. okay, Santi, but what do you, I receive like an email about a supportive classes and it mentions something about um, Wednesday on Saturdays and on Saturdays it mentioned that it is something at the Institute. I mean, I ah, have right. Options. It may be. Uh, probably, that, probably, that's, probably that's how it is, by the way. Probably you have the, the, the online class with me here uh, in terms of what is the, 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 the topic, the content of the program and then you may have a different tutor or a, I don't know, an assistant that will be helping you with assessments or to discuss topics that are not clear yet. Yeah, it may be, it may mm. be. Okay. So the it, mandatory assistant is for this class on Friday, but we yeah. have the other option on Wednesday yeah. and Saturday, yeah. but yeah. that also, Wednesday option is online as well, but- Yeah, and that option is with me too. I think that, that option, I think the other online option with Calendly, did you receive a link that is called Calendly? Yeah, but it only has uh, availability on Tuesday. So I'm I'm so confused by because they have uh, sent a lot of emails and they mentioned a lot of dates of the of the week. So I'm so confused because with that calendar you can schedule just thirty minutes of sections, um, but it's only available on Tuesdays. But would you uh, mind you to know, send me that link? I would like to check that link. What, do you have it there? uh yeah sure just give me a second i can please, please send it to me because i okay. i need to check i need to check that I, if, yeah if... because with the wednesday availability i have uh but uh, they mentioned your name they said that you will have assistant in other supporting class assessment mm -hmm. on wednesday from six to eight and they put a link and then they say that you will assist as well on Saturday okay. from 9 to 1 p.m. on Saturday right, in that, the campus. In the campus? No, that's, I don't know. If you can, if yeah. you can, if you can send oh. me that email, Vale, please. Yeah. I need to sure. check oh. that. <clears throat> so in that information. I already sent you that one, and I'm looking for the other one with the, um, with the calendar. It even has like a link uh, for join uh, in a Microsoft Teams conversation. Let me see. Vale, uh, what email did you use to send me that? Uh, I sent you, is, the subject is support class information. And it's in that to you stand, Lonsdale Institution, that, that's the email. Okay.
Dejaba para no. Uh, Valeria, do me a favor. Just forward that email because uh, somehow I don't have access now to that. Uh, Okay. Send it to Santi. Okay. Arroba or at mm -hmm. Santi Vela con B pequeña. Dot com. Dot com. Yeah. Okay, I already did it. And uh, I just send you the other one uh, who has the link for the supportive classes that have the um, availability on Tuesday. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, I got it. And in the second one, you have like uh, the chart with the um, with the information for Saturday and Wednesday. It was so confused because I I received mm -hmm. many emails. Yeah, with different that. information. And yeah, that's what I sent you um, uh, the the limit the that email the last Thursday just asking because I it wasn't sure which day that all was right let me have a look at all of that I will talk I will I will be talking to the school to find out what is the situation with all of this and I will get back I will explain everything to you guys with more knowledge in the next Friday okay. But now, okay. did, did you receive that two emails I already sent you? I, I did. I was looking at them. I was looking okay. at them. I just need to find out and organize all that information and define what I need to do. Yeah. Okay. Now, so, let's, but yeah. at, at, at the moment, you know that this is like an online uh, course full time. I, I don't know now with that email, to be honest, because it seems like you have face to face interactions as well for what they saw in those emails. What I, what I can tell you is that the class with me on Fridays is online, but what for what I saw in that email, you have like two supporting extra days that you can go to the yeah. campus. That's what I, but I need to read carefully. You know what I mean? I need to read carefully all of that. Yeah, I, I did. I did. Uh, I read all of that. But mm -hmm. uh, what I understand is that we have like one mandatory class that is this one on Friday and the other ones, uh, one of Optional. those is just online and uh on the other on Saturdays. Yeah, correct. Um, sure. I think that's how it is, but I need to, I think that, I think that's how it is again, Valeria, but I need to I need to yeah. go through those emails because I didn't receive those emails. Obviously I, I am not a student, so I don't know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sure. Level. All Thank right. you. Thank you for that. But it's just for me to to help you better. Okay. Sure. Uh, all right. Let's do the assessments, guys. Let's do the assessments. Okay. We need to do that. Uh, go to accelerate please and open the assessment sections in the learning plan. So you have done the lesson. Now, what is the next assessment? Please let me know. Sorry, Santi, what are we going to complete? We're going to do the assessments, or at least I'm going to try to explain to you how to complete the assessments, okay? That's all. Mm, Where okay. can I so find the quiz the and the observation? I will show you. Would you mind to share your screen with me? And I show you, Mariana, where you can find them. Oh, yeah. Um, Just give me a moment, okay? Yeah. 
or anyone that have the accelerate platform ready you, that mariana now is are you seeing my yeah go ahead seeing... right good now let's go let's go to the just click on where it says lonsdale institute here yep click it there then here and yeah, click where it says learning plan you know inside learning plan, yeah, learning plan. let's see all right so scroll down all right so the lesson has been completed you see you see that is green yeah now click where it says online quiz oh where where does it says oh oh i got it here yeah so we need to do those those assessments so let's start with that one first all right so go to, to the, 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 the red button oh, no, that's... no overview provided no worries about that. What it says is start attempt one or 15. That is the overview, it's just in the next one. So go to the next, next screen. All right, beautiful. Okay, over there is the assessment, right? Let's do it. Let's do it together, okay? Everybody, please, please, let's do it. Let's do it with, uh, with Mariana quickly, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, question number one. When planning presentation approach, what should matter the most to you? Connect with your audience or deliver a great presentation? What do you think? Connect with your audience. Oh, you. Market. Agree. And go check what it says, check. Good. So the system is telling us that that is correct. If the answer is incorrect, the system will tell you and you can try again. So go next. Okay, good. All right. When planning presentations intended outcomes, what should matter the most? What is more important at the end? To deliver a great presentation, to make sure that you add the presentation to your curriculum, or to have a call to action. Call to action. A call to action. But now, listen up. The only reason you know this, I mean, not for everyone, but for majority of you, is because we discussed that in the lesson. You understand what I mean? That is why it's so important to come to the lesson. Because I talk in the lesson about what will be asked in the assessments. So yes, mark, mark that one, please. Only the first one. Yeah, because it has like a multiple response. So. Mm -hmm. So it's tricky, you know, the assessments, the assessments are done for you to came to the classes first. That's why I just want you to know, right? You can easily define your presentation primary target or the target audience uh, by identifying and analyzing what? Geographical variable. So mark, mark, mark those, mark those that you think is the right answer. Demography. Geographical variables. Geographic. Geographic. Yeah, go ahead and check. Just those three, right? What do you yeah. think? Yeah. What do you what, what do you remember from the class? Those yeah, three. we, we right. mentioned so, that. Yep. Yeah. So let's check that. Let's check it. It's good. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Again, I just want you to see how important it is to get into the classes. Otherwise, yeah. it would be so tricky to do the assessment, and it's likely that you will fail it. All right, let's go to the next one. When presenting to a group of people, what could happen? What could happen? You may offend someone when presenting your ideas and that is okay. Or when you present to people, everybody will like you and everybody will be okay with you. What do you guys the think? The first one. And that is okay. And you need to be prepared for that reality because it is impossible to say something smart without offending anyone. So be yeah. prepared. Be prepared to offend people when you present because that is part of the journey. Right, check. Well done. Let's go to the next one. All right, so what we talk about this, right? What can we do? What strategies can we choose? We can educate people. We can inform people. We also can persuade people to do what we want them to do. We can entertain people like the study, like the stand-up stand -up comedies um, comedians do. All right, or we can also use time management strategy to be very careful how long it will take. What do you think of all those four we should click? So it should be this one, this three, because we are always giving information. Yeah. So They're true, so true well. but, but, but it's more around educating. It's more about giving information that people oh. don't get. 
So let's let's mark let's mark all of them to see what happens. Because it's a oh I thought that it says that we could choose three. Sorry, yeah. So we can. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. So don't just select three. You're right. You're right. So which one? You're right. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. So which? So try again. That was my bad. So we can what we which one should be out then? The entertaining um, formation, possession, and entertaining. No. Information management. In, Time management. Time management is not an strategy, right? So let's take it out. Yeah, it, it is correct when you mm -hmm. uncheck the time management. Correct. I just want you guys to see how it works. All right, cool. Time management is something that we have to do even if we are like giving information, persuasion, yeah. strategy. That's it. Well All right. When presenting, always make it clear that you have the utmost respect for the audience. Immediately acknowledge the audience expertise or effort. Tell people, thank you for coming to this presentation. Uh, or, or as I did this morning, you know, thank you guys for coming to this class because I need to acknowledge your effort. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for having your camera on, those sort of things, all right? And we need to reinforce it again and again. So they, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. All right. So this is about evaluating the presentation. All right. How can we do that evaluation? We can do focus groups. What is focus groups? Yeah. Telling a group of people within the audience, hey, you five came with me, we'll be having a coffee in this separate room and we will be talking yeah. about the presentation. So focus groups is that, one. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Focus group can work so well to do Ooh, this type so of works. Good. They good. are very important. I, I one on one interviews can work too. What is that, sir? Um, one mm -hmm. on one interviews can work too. I've done that and they work they work very very good. Yeah, but what about if you have like a big group? You can just take all the interviews one on one. So true. Exactly right. If it's a big, big, large group, probably the Fox group will work better. But if it's a small group, 10 people, 15 people, you can do one to ones, right? All right, let's mark one to ones as well. Mm -hmm. Service. Mm, we can use them. I don't like them. And you know why? Because people lie when they feel so. Mm -hmm. But let's That's mark. Yeah, but you can lie in an interview as well. So, yeah, but, but you, that's uh, why a focus group is one of the best tools that we have. Exactly right. Exactly right. Because Maybe some people just don't just like don't like being like exposed, you know. So it could be so true, and that's why again the focus group is so good because you are supported by the group. Well done. All right. So let's click so participant in service as well because we can use that to evaluate the presentation too. Critical mm -hmm. friends. Remember that I told you that you can ask someone in the audience. How I went. You're my friend. You are my father. You are, you know, you're my wife. Tell me how I went. Tell me the truth. So you can use that one too. Okay. okay. And then you can analyze how many people subscribe to the to the YouTube channel, how, how many people download the PDF, how many people bought the book, and that will tell you how good the presentation was as well. Isn't good. it? Right. Yeah. Okay. So everything seems good. Um, yeah. This is for the, well, the, hmm. okay. Yep, yeah, that's just these, the instructions. All right, good. The next one. You can summarize key concepts and ideas and present them to your target audience by how we can summarize ideas? How can we prepare? How can we be more knowledgeable about the topics? Can we read books related to that topic? Yeah. 100%. Can we yeah, watch we can. YouTube videos about that topic? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's what I do. I really use YouTube for that purpose. This can one's we, good all, too. All of the option less than yeah. the last one. There is mm -hmm. no need to summarize concept. Yeah. All right. So let's do that. Yeah. Well done. well done. That question, 
for the person that is doing this so quickly, they end marking all of them. But if you read the questions carefully, you will select the first four. Well done. Right. Uh -huh. so go to the next one. It's 10 questions. Oh my goodness, we didn't talk about this one. It's good, it's good that we're talking about this one for a little bit. So sometimes, you know, you, you, you need to provide the audience an opportunity for them to participate. It's, it's not sometimes or, uh, or like we are always told, oh, you need to wait at the end and people will be. Uh, sometimes we should allow people to ask when they, when they feel like. All right. So we can provide opportunities for people to participate, to seek clarifications, information, when or how. First option, taking questions through your presentation. So that, good, that, right? one, that one is so good. And I and I do that. That's why I told you, if you want to interrupt me, interrupt me. No problem. This one works too. Like, I would say all of them, them, right? It's the last one. Yeah, this one, this is the one that I don't know if works. Yeah. Because if they discuss in person, they are going to get like um this in, you know, like this is so they are going to pay more attention. Yeah. However, guys, when you have a huge, a huge audience, when you are presenting to a thousand people, that is a really good strategy. You get oh. people to ask the questions to themselves first, and likely they will solve that question between they between them so, so all I, of them work I, I i i would say yes i would say yes the last one is for large audiences you know when you want to optimize it's like what i did today when i divide the group into remember mm. it was able to touch on two topics at the same time yeah so, but when uh, you say that uh, at the at the beginning of the presentation that you allow people just being asking all the time because it is not like how one way um, conference, you allow the people just being asking questions meanwhile the, the conversation. So you can just, just check this point as well. So true, so true. All right, let's check it. Well done. So this question, how you can confirm your target audience understands the concepts and ideas that you are presenting? How can you identify that they understand? Both of them. I mean, one way is the first one, which is, guys, have you understood what I have said? Is it clear? Do you have any questions? You know, stopping the presentation and allowing yourself to ask people if they, uh, on track is a good mm -hmm. strategy. That's the first one. The second one is not asking, but if everybody has the cameras on, if everybody's looking at the camera, you may define that people is observing your presentation with attention. Good. Mm -hmm. And you can observe uh, your audience. Behavior Very important. Observation is, observation is super important here because that allows you to be more uh, funny if you want to be funny that allows you to be more active if people is getting sleep, sleeping or they are bored you know that, that, all right beautiful guys we have done it submit the assessment all right now you need to sign it mariana mm. oh how oh my god it's with, too difficult here with with, with your with, that's it yes that's it i think i'm going to put a different sign because i'm not able to do my like exactly that, and that's all you need to do then so the system now mariana knows that you have done the lesson that you have done the online quiz all right so go back to your learning plan and you will see how we build the platform you see that now you have two greens mm -hmm. yeah that's so for, for go to the number one have a look at the number one at the top where it says you, you, you know it says make presentations no, the, it says, a little bit up. No. no, go back. Don't click on it. Just for you to see. Don't click on it, but that I exactly right. Go to what it says, number one. You see that the circle is half filled. Mm -hmm. that is because when, when it's completed, it's because you have completed that unit. So now go to the written assessment. Which one? Written assessment. The next, the next, the next assessment that you have to do. Here? Exactly right. Video? 
is in order. Yeah, so let's do that. All right. So this assessment is intended to demonstrate skills and knowledge when delivering and reviewing a presentation. So let's start that and click on it. All right. The question goes and says, record a video of maximum five minutes about how COVID-19 has opened new opportunities for savvy entrepreneurs. Guys, that topic is optional. You know what I mean? If you talk about sports, if you talk about sports that are seen as businesses, what is done, for example, in Melbourne as a city that is globally recognized because of the sport events. If you talk mm -hmm. about politics, if you talk about economy, whatever, you don't need to talk about COVID. But this Can is- we talk about food too, like food industry. You know, there's a lot of options of food that we have here, Victoria Market and all of that. Always you're talking about food from the business perspective, all right? Sorry? Always you're talking about food from the business, from a business perspective. Like, oh, so I can talk about food if I want. Yes, but from a business perspective. For example, if you say, if you say Melbourne is one of the, is, is the capital in the world with more restaurants per capita, per person. Mm. And, and that, because that is true. There is no city like Melbourne in the world. Melbourne is the city with more restaurants. So in the world, in the world, yeah. Oh, that's a good, thank you. So, I appreciate okay. that. I didn't know that, that's so interesting. Yeah, so that's why the hospitality industry in Melbourne is one of the more the most developed hospitality industries in the world. The coffee, the food, you know, the breakfast that you have in Melbourne is global, is top global quality. It's crazy good. And today, um, a survey was revealed, this is like something for you to know, that Melbourne wind today, that is the third most uh, livable city. Like, I don't know how it's said. Yeah, like, yeah, it's one of the, always is one of the first three because the quality of life is so high. The, 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 the highways, right. the restaurants, the safety, the schools, the, the, you know, tourism, the wines, the cheeses, the, the, everything is great. So, so yeah, yeah. So if you want to talk about that from the business perspective, food, fantastic. What I don't want you guys is to, is to tell me about, all right, my presentation will be about how to cook the best bolognese because that will not cut, all right? <laughs> yeah. Just, just to be a little bit sarcastic, but that's what I mean with, with business. If you talk about hospitality industry and how the food in Melbourne is supporting the hospitality industry, that is good. So that's what you need to do. And the item number two, have a look at the item number two, please. Click on the item number two. All right. yeah, this one no, is super important. Okay. In this one, you need to upload a video of someone giving you feedback about your presentation. Remember that we talk about feedback. So you can ask a friend, you can ask a colleague, you can ask me if you want, you can ask a classmate, anyone, anyone. Hey, have a look at this video and please tell me what do you think about it? If you if you can record it, that would be ideal. But sometimes right. sometimes people don't like to be recorded. You know that, right? Yeah. So if 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 you cannot record it because that person is not okay with you recording that person, it's still recorded, but with the, without the camera, or you put a, a, a sticky tape or whatever, and you give me the audio. All right? Yeah, the audio can be good too. Of course, of course. All right. So that is what you need to do. Video show one. How long does that video have to be? I, I, remember. It's up to you. It could be one minute, but you 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 you, you demonstrate how good you are. Oh uh, no, I mean the uh feedback. How uh, how long would that have to be? No worries. As soon as no more than five. Yeah. Look, that's a matter. But remember that doesn't okay. really matter. What I want in that video is to give me you give me an introduction of the topic, so I can I can find out what is the introduction. I want yeah. to see what is the body, what is the topic being developed, and I want to see the conclusion. That okay. is what I want to see. In the feedback, I want a feedback that is real, that is honest. Like, you know what? Um, you didn't look at the camera or you were reading a script or, or, you know, you didn't pronounce the words that were more important or you didn't uh, ask people what to do next. You didn't use a call to action or, or I don't know, you should dress with, with a more bright shirt because... You, or the lighting. What about this one? What about the lighting was so poor and, and I, it's so difficult to see your face in the video or the quality of the audio was so poor, whatever, but get 
someone to give you a honest feedback about that video that you guys that you that you just did. All right. Now, Mariana, exit this. Just move out from this from this assessment because you need to do this in your own time. And let's go back. Let's go back uh, to the to the um, uh, learning plan. All right. So check learning plan again. You, um, Santa, oh, yeah, I need to leave. You need to go. Sam, no, no worries, yeah. Mike. Uh, I will mark your attendance. I have, I have really. Thank you very much. Guys, See if you next anybody week. needs to leave, please let me know or just write your name in the chat. Santi, are, are we going to do this, this thing with, uh, I mean, your help in each assignment all the time? Or it is just because now this is the first time that we are doing it. So we are all have to do it by altars. All the time. I always help you with it. That's what I do with my students. I always help you. I, I don't do it. Like I didn't do the quiz. I just gave you some key ideas for you oh. to answer and you were feeling the answers. So oh, I always help you. Always. For next Friday, you are going to join us as well. As well. And I will help you at the end. But okay. That is that is that how it will be good. A hundred percent. Hundred percent because I, I it, for me it's worse when you guys don't do the assessments and at the end of the program I have 200, 300 assessments uh, to, 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 to mark and to find out what happened is horrible. It's, a, it's horrible. I'm doing this for you, but also for me. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's, let's, go, let's, let's do the observation now. So, so go, go down to the observation assessment, which is a very important one. Click there. All right. And just press start at number one. Yeah, yeah, good. All right, guys, please pay attention. You need to read these questions. Observation assessments, I need to mark them. I need to sign them. I need to give my word to the government that you are good at making presentations. So you need to be very, very clever when answering these questions. Question number one, does the student have the skills and knowledge to plan the presentation approach and intended outcomes? So you need to ask yourself, do I have, that's how you need to ask yourself this question. Do I have the skills and knowledge to plan the presentation? And do I have the skills and knowledge to understand what should be the outcome of the presentation, right? So what do we need to have in consideration when we plan for a presentation? What is the first thing? The topic? The topic, what is the second thing? How are you going to express it? Like, how are you going to be giving that presentation which is what with the key ideas remember the keywords okay. uh -huh. right and that's why i showed you the first video the topic was education and the key ideas i know uh, the topic how, the topic was how a school how a schools are killing creativity, creativity. And, and the key yeah. and the key ideas were education and creativity remember all right cool once we have the ideas what we need to do we have Think to start that, planning the okay. presentation no, we, we are, we're planning the presentation. That's what we're doing. So we are planning the presentation. So we need to know what is the topic, the key ideas. We need to know the audience and we need to define what is the methods, the best method for us to reach that audience. All oh, right? right. And that is the planning part. That is the planning part, all right? Now, what is the outcome of a presentation? What should be the outcome of a presentation? We use presentations to educate people, we use presentations to- Entertain. Entertain people, which is totally persuade. okay. To persuade people and- Convince. And to convince people. So how do you answer this question? You say, I do. You need to tell me, you need to say, I do. I do have the skills and knowledge to plan presentations. But that is not enough. You need to say, Next time I deliver a presentation, I will plan it first. How? I will define the topic, the keywords, will know my audience, and I will define what is the best method to deliver that presentation. Also, oh, we have to write down. Of course, because that is when you have an opportunity in first person, like talking to me, you know, like you talking to me, you're telling me, Santi, I know this. Okay. This is the most difficult assessment, guys. All right? This is yeah, the... this one takes time. Takes time. It is... But it's so good. If you yeah. really, if you really find the 
the you know like the methodology and you will appreciate this assessment because this is like an auto evaluation kind of thing you know like you really yeah. you really you really find out if you are good at this or not yeah, yeah like uh, we had a self criteria or something like that of course guys now if you don't remember if you don't know you need to tell me i don't know and that is okay too why you will not be passing the assessment but you have 15 opportunities to do this so we need to meet a one-to-one -one in one of these supporting online classes we need to meet and i need to help you to fill that knowledge gap it will be with you only with you not with the group because the, the class is gone but but you need to be able to have all the knowledge that is required all right so uh, Please finish that finish that question. All right, Mariana, but you got it. Let's go to the question number two. Then you fin finish this later. It's for me to explain this to you quickly, guys. Go to the question number two. All right. Do you have the skills and knowledge to identify the target audience? How you identify the target audience? How do you get to know the target audience? What variables you need to use? Demographic variables. Yeah. So you need to say, yes, I know how to identify my target audience because I will be using demographic variables, geographic variables, and psychographic variables to know exactly what is the best audience for my presentation, for my product presentations, for my next event, for my next class, whatever is the next thing that you're doing that you need to use your voice. All right? Oh, I know. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Demographic. Uh, we said demographic. We said uh, demo, geo, and uh, physic. Exactly. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, and psycho, yeah. Demo, and geo, and psycho. Psycho. No worries about the spelling. Go. We can fix this later. Don't worry about that. <laughs> that doesn't matter at all. My recommendation though okay, is, this, but yeah, is psychographic, right? Yeah, download, download Grammarly. Mm -hmm. Grammarly will help you a lot to fix all these okay, issues like this. Um, demographic reference variables. Uh -huh. All right, blah, 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 blah. That's a matter. All right, that's a matter. You complete, but now I know if you write that and you've closed that properly, now I know that you know. All mm -hmm. right. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Let's go to the number. Let's do the, the number four. And number three. Presentation strategies, format, and delivery methods. So, what presentation strategies we define it in the class? Um, we can have podcasts, we can make a video, we can make a presentation, we can make a PowerPoint. A Ooh. PowerPoint you can be through images. Yeah. Or you may even say, my teacher told me that next time I should try to do a presentation without, without any PowerPoint, without any visual aid. And that will be my next presentation strategy. If you tell me that, I know that you know. I just want you guys to see the observation assessments as an assessment for me to really know if you know. Everything else, you know, the quiz, you can be talking with your students, you can be talking, you know, you can, you can be lucky. Um, you know what I mean? But with the observation assessment, I really know who knows. Yeah. That's all. All right, guys. Uh, all right, cool. Um, that's it. I exit now this present is this observation and you can do this later, please. So exit it now. But always answer these questions with I do have knowledge, I know. Or you may oh. say, or you may say, uh, I, I read a book, and in the book, this is what is being explained. Or this is a video in YouTube that is that is talking about something similar. Be creative. Find different mm -hmm. ways to demonstrate that you know. What happened? All right, guys, this is it. This is it.